Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm which is very journalistic, and i explain what I mean. Academics didn't take any notice of music until punk, because then they could get into the sociology, the gender issues, the feminism, the whole thing. But of course, it's got nothing to do with music. And every time I opened my mouth, I got shouted down. Well, not shouted down, but I felt as if like, I was being marginalised. And I went, well... These are the lecturers you're talking about? Yeah. I said, there's only one way around. And who were the lecturers? Uh, Philip Tagg, Mike Brocken... What, classical players? What? Straight players and sort of... They're academics. See, the thing about music since the 60s is that it's become the property of a number of different types of social groups, like politicians get on the, the music wagon there, um, sociologists get on the music, ban the bloody bomb, save the world, all this, you know. And consequently, um, if, if you, say, criticise um, uh, Bob, what's his name, uh, Live Aid, Bob... Gelbaum. Bob Gelbaum. If you go, I don't like the music, they go, oh, I see, you don't think we should help people in Ethiopia, they go, no, I didn't say that. I said, I didn't like his music. They couldn't you, fucking play, that was the thing. That's, you know, exactly, well, that's just... See, you're fine. That's all right. No, that's, see, so come right. I'm not, I want to write a book, or, or more 
kind of genius of Paul McCartney. Oh, God. Okay. There's a new, yes, last night in London there was a recital, oh, a garland for, um, oh, for, his for Linda. And they're fucking Benji Burgers. Cardi for Linda. He holds tapes on it, he holds tapes, uh, holds tunes on the tape and gets musicians <laughs> to let them down. And he gets Carl Davis to walk asleep. I know. Uh, it's and embarrassing, said, this, it? this is the genius of Paul McCartney. <laughs> no, no, no. But you can't, anyway, can't tell anybody that. I don't feel, I don't, there's no, it's, it's, you're wasting your time att attacking anything because that's the establishment. So, so I went, I'm going to do something completely different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to musicians I've known in my life and, and, and find out how they started, what their influences were. And what are you going to do with this? What they did. Publish it. Get it out. I'm going to publish it. I get it published. It's called Speak for Yourself. That's what it's called. And it's about, it's what musicians say about what they did. Not their opinions about Paul McCartney or Live Aid. Oh, no, sure. Because, I mean, everyone's got the identical opinions of that. Anyway, we've well, been ordered, you know, we're fucking shy. The majority think they're genius. <laughs> <laughs> ah. So, look, what I want to do is, I want to get some biographical details, like name, where you were born, what your mum and dad did, and what your first influences were. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take that, because instead of writing... I don't writing, like tape. Like well, it's just, you're not writing down red carpet. I don't like the name, I don't like the bloody words, I don't like records of it on tape. Okay, let's do that. Hello? Yes, look. Yeah, and milk and an onion before you come in. Milk and an onion before you come in. All right. I've got red here, so I'm busy. All right. Okay, ta -da. Okay. So, what's your real name then? Why do you want that? So, because uh, I can say what red is. It's not red. And of course it isn't. Was, was, was that Ernest. Ernie. Ernest. Ernest Carter. And, and the red is was young, was it hair? Yeah, a Canadian family they call it that, little Teddy Choice. Canadian family. Very famous family of course, Teddy Jewish. Because of your hair? Yeah. Right, Nick. Um, They're stuck with me all the time, right? Oh yeah, I know. Look Before that I was called Sonny Carter. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Can I put that down? Is that all right? Sonny Great. Carter. Before that. Okay. It was a stage there. Okay. Oh, well, this is interesting. When were you born, right? Hey, not saying that. Aren't you? No. Are you? Okay. I don't want to print. Fuck it, you know. <laughs> yeah, some time ago, born some time ago. I'm going to have to put something down. Born some time ago. Okay. Um, what's your mum and dad? Where were you born, right? Birkenhead. Yeah, so you're Birkenhead, aren't you? Yeah. What's your dad do? Butcher. That's funny. Book yeah. Butcher, you know that's funny that because um, I was speaking to Brian Jones last night, he's a butcher. Uh, butcher, Bucky. Okay. And your man, housewife? Oh, man, just a housewife. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man, just a, yeah, normal. Okay. No no music, uh, any. Uh, she plays the Woody Herman band before. Fooled around the Woody Herman. Um, any brothers or sisters? Two sisters, not musical. Two sisters, not musical. Not musical. Not musical. Okay. Not yeah, because, I mean, where'd they come from, then? Hey, where'd they come from? No, where did you come from? Right there. I don't know, where did the music thing come from? How the bloody hell did that start? But if, if your dad was a bookie and a, a butcher, your mum was a housewife... Well, it's just your father was interested in bands and all that was the only reason. And he uh, used to follow bands around, and of course I like that. I just wanted to play something that he wanted me, because it's almost a bloody fuss, which is usually a story. How know? old? Oh, well, it was frightening to be a band. Nine, ten years of age from now. Oh, so, your dad followed bands around because he's your dad, you didn't you want to do what your dad does? Like well, he used to have bands and he got to know all the, the famous bands, you know, the, the big name bands then, we were in those days. You know, he got to know them as people? Yeah, he used to go around and get to know them somehow. He was uh, yeah. one of those for people before, you know. Yeah, and, I know. Uh, I know. used to know the, the, sort of the band business and he used to know the music. And I, I used to uh, just bought. Because it was like kids, Christmas drums and okay. show some kind of, I don't know. Well, hang on. Uh, should, you, should you get a kid that's like nine and ten? Now, I noticed you show a bit of promise someone has got to stay. He's all right. Who did that? You well, I just play a local band, was that? Just play a local band. What? As a kid. I really did kids. You know? As a kid. So get this. What's, what was the line? I, I mean, all in, in some proper band. Sax. Trumpets. Well, dance band, then. Yes. Oh, yeah, we can't play. Small, so they were small dance bands? 
Yeah, small dance practice, yeah. Yeah, right, so you were so you were sub teenager almost, like 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, you were having a go? Yeah. Okay, well, great. What just, just pair about, you know, in bands, and they're just local bands playing. Were there lots about. of them about? Yeah. Pardon? Were there lots of them about then? Oh, yeah. That see, that's yeah. important. Lots of them about. Well, there were lots of dances, though, as you see. There's all kinds of local bands and all those bloody... What's the names of them? Oh, Christ, I don't know. Come on, names. A couple, a couple. Give us a couple. A couple of the bands. There was Sam Bonner. Sam. Yeah, he used to have, like, num it, now, even there's a fella, he used to have four or five pieces. Bands, and he used to have, like, number one band and number two band. And, <laughs> you know, on, on a bad gig, it would be a number two band. Or, yeah. Or number one. Was like, oh, Christ, I can go on back in the 20s now. That was Sam Bonner. <laughs> <laughs> no, Somebody was local. Oh, he's Liverpool. Yeah, he was local. Yeah. He's Liverpool. His so, son eventually played with us in the drafting rooms. Right. Uh, Sam Bonnet, his son, is a yeah. saxophone player. So yes. Sam himself was the old Sam, was a piano player. Yeah, I, the, the boy, I mean, was, was just, I barely remember him actually. The name his father used to tell me, you know. Okay, so you were, a, so you were just sitting in. What? Yeah, just best of them. What was the kid? What, what kind of kids did they make then? Who, who made kids then? Oh, Premier, maybe. Premier. Okay. Premier. Uh, maybe Premier. Those kind of kids. Were. And so that was the major kids in Britain, then Premier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't know how far back they were. Pre-war yeah. kids. Christ, oh, yeah, they were. Yeah. What were you doing for symbols then? I mean, it was same thing, Zillions. Yeah, I know you played better symbols then, didn't you? Well, Zillions. Yeah, you played Zillions. There were all Zillions then, because of that. Oh, no, no, yeah. But the one, the, in those days, mainly so, the good ones were so, yeah. If you played so, it was a secret form, as you used to say, they had them. Yeah, that's right, yeah, right, yeah. I suppose they're still out of the way, I don't know. But... Standard kit, bass drum, bass drum pedal, iron? Yeah, just bass drum, yeah. Right, drum, yeah. yeah. Swan arms. <laughs> yeah, right. bloody hell. Yeah, yeah. Well, these are consoles, then. Do you mean like a stand now? Like a stand now. They used to have the, the temple blocks up the top. And the skulls? Yes, temple blocks. Right, yeah, God, of course. Yeah, yeah. that was a kit that had trap tray and the thing, not those days, the kids then. Because, of course, the dance, dance did novelty numbers, didn't they? Oh, yeah. It was a big thing. I mean, yeah, that would. Wood, wood blocks and temple blocks and all kinds of effects. You know. No telly, no, 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 really. When you went out for a like, bit of a jig and a, a dance, and uh, the band provided the entertainment. Oh, it was all bands. It was. Yeah. A, Discourse, for Christ's sake, there's so much work, you know. Let's face it, those days, look, 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 look at the ballrooms they have, they have the grafting rooms, the Lialto, yeah. Reese's in Liverpool. I remember that. This pre war, though, Ren? No, there was the early part uh, after the war as well. Just after, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they had the. Um... Did you start playing before the war? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, because yeah, uh, yeah. I was playing as a kid, yeah. Because you're the only one I've met yeah. that has. Yeah. So, so there was like this big ballroom environment. So the what 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 range the bands five piece up to what? Well, we a lot of the grafting. I, I came up the army, you see. When? In forty seven. Army forty seven. Because you went right through, did you? No, I didn't. I wasn't in the army that long. Yeah. And that's part of the war. Bullets are bullets. Christ, I had bullet holes in the heels. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, army we for like, uh, in the army uh, then, uh, when I came to the army into the Grafton. Um, we you played in the army? Oh Christ, yeah, I played we had, we had, we had, we had, we had Bobby Track with a lot of famous musicians in the army. Yeah. You played with? Oh yeah, I formed my own bands in the, in the army, quintets and big band there. Bobby Track, you remember Bobby Track? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobby's my daughter's godfather. Oh I yeah, yeah. He was Cause she's called player. after him. Her name's Roberta. Oh person. right. His boss player was some great player. He was, I've got he some took, stuff from the 50s. He took Kelly Baker's place. Yeah, I've got some stuff from the 50s beat yeah. off of British bands. Unbelievable. Because I'm 75 now, I say yeah. I'm 75 yeah. now. Yeah. So we've got back now, you know. So you've got this environment, like loads of people playing at a very high standard. In the, the army? Be, yeah, they'd have to be. The band there. behind the army, I think it was with me in the army band, there was Bobby Pratt, there was Alan Morehouse, you remember him? Mm. Some mm. place to conduct the NDO. Yeah, time. yeah. Uh, Gordon Franks. Um, Alan Franks was his brother, the soccer player. Frank, Gordon yeah. was the bar player, the Gerardo band, later, when they got out of the army. They were only one big band, you know, there, and, and Charlie Messenger. Have you ever heard trombone player? No, no, no. no. Hey. So where did you pick the reading up? I mean, you go from nine to ten to get a kit. 
You're playing with bands. Did you just pick it up, Red? Like most drummers yeah. seem to pick it up. Well, in the beginning, yeah, I didn't read really in the beginning, and I took piano lessons, you see, as a kid. Oh, right, OK, yeah, didn't we all, yeah? Didn't we wish we all kept them up with all but, that? No, of course, you know. I, I, I mean, I gave it up when I shouldn't have done, because I was one of the bloody... You see Biggie Mallory, guys? Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Nice, no, fucking genius. Yeah, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. He was the governor for me. Yeah, oh, Sorry. proper player, wasn't he? Sorry about everybody. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know, I know. It was a full player, one of the musical brain he had, too. Yeah. He was with his musical brain. Yeah. It was an incredible brain he had musically. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, he played beautifully. Yeah. You could, he really could sit talking. You know what Rick could do? It was amazing. Because he worked with him 25. We were oh, together for 30 years. Yeah. yeah. Rick could sit here now and start on the and somebody would walk in and say to him, Hello, Rick, I'm here. Could you do me a favour and say, Yeah, and he'd be talking to you about anything in the garden. Yeah. And he'd say, Yeah. Can you do? You, can you have the chords a little bit? He, he picks up like body and soul, isn't yeah. it? Our sophisticated ladies, what like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And he'd say, yeah, I've got a piece of paper. Over. What key do you want in? C, he'd say. No matter what key he said, he said, would say, B. He yeah. would say, what do you want in? And he said, yeah, OK. So let's get that. How the hell? But he'd talking to you now. Yeah. Like the garden. Yeah. It's sounds This bloody car of mine, you know, it's... Uh, I don't know I should buy it. I don't know what these cars. And he'd be looking at it and he'd say, we've got the car. I said, I'm still smiling, so I didn't carry it to the fair. I'm thinking about it. And within about, I'll tell you now, within about 15 minutes, he'd say, oh, I think it's fucking perfect. Chords, yeah. notation, yeah. whatever key you said he wanted it in, WB or whatever you wanted it. Where did he get that ability from? I mean, where did he get that? He's got perfect pitch for stars. Was he, a, was he a local lad? Really? Riggy, yeah. yeah. You could use a glass and you'd say, well, Kate, look, what the note yeah. was. And he'd say it was a sharp one. He'd go, B, yeah. he'd go, B, I'd see you flat and sharp. And he'd say, I'm going to pick it up and keep right, never wrong. And I see him now, so the glasses. Oh, yeah, like that. Glasses, <laughs> glasses are so good. Yeah. I go down, I see his wife quite a lot now. Yeah. We go around together. Yeah, yeah, of course. She's a you know. But, um, oh, he's incredible, Rig. Really. I've never been probably the greatest business man in my life, you know. He had this perfect. What was his background? He was, a, he was self-taught, wouldn't believe this. But he was born with perfect pitch. He and he started as a boy virtuoso. It's one thing I've been No, he's an accordion player, he was. Ah, boy virtuoso. Ah, he went on a boy virtuoso as a kid, yeah. playing accordion rig, you know. And uh, he just, he was self-taught, he never had that in his life. And then he, he didn't, you know, he just, he had, this, he had a, a musical brain that he found out. And his core is... Playing and everything. Oh, I know. Jeez, you know, it's beautiful playing, I know. The most beautiful player, yeah. you know. Yeah, and, uh, I'm used to talk about Darrell and Vinny. Oh, you know, he'd, he'd lose it all. Yeah. Sorry, Vinny's a good player, yeah. Vinny Newton. Yeah. 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 But even Vinny said, you know, yeah. Rick was yeah. the. Um, he had a. I don't know, it's in his head, it was yeah. music in his head. You no, know. They were funny lot, though, weren't they? I mean, like Vinny, I don't know, Vinny was like a car dealer, wasn't he? Rocking motors. He was a good player, Vinny. Yeah, he was a great player. But he had good training, though. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, he ended up selling cars in the. Yeah, yeah. what are you. Yeah. Not the cars, right? That's right, that's right, yeah. Yeah. But and really, I feel like Vinnie Parker's dad. Oh, uh, Vinnie's a great player too, yeah, lovely yeah. player. But I, for me, I see the good with that was Rick. I, I thought it, it was Rick. Really... Do you know there's nobody like that now? There's nobody around. Rick was something, a uh, one-off, you know, yeah. it's unbelievable what he used to do. But he, that standard of playing has gone. Right? Yeah. But his chord sequences were so beautiful, different yeah. than anybody else. They were, yeah. Oh, they played yeah. it. And he, he used to do some funny things, like, you know, yeah. he um, He'd just walk in a place and somebody would be sort of guitar and he'd be chatting to you and he'd say, oh, well, you, 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 that, that chord is an E-flat sound. <laughs> and carry on. That E-flat sound. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the lovely story of him was that he had a recording studio in Liverpool right. for a while. Right. In the, well, Disby League, I don't know, talking about the 70s. Yeah, right. And uh, Rick, he was always decorated with yeah. people with because he was yeah. like that type thing, you know, knocking walls down. Yeah, yeah. His hands were cut to pieces, yeah. kind of very terrible, you know. And I had a little Freddie Lloyd. Yeah, Fearless Fred, yeah. Fearless Fred, yeah. Came in. Now, Fearless Fred had never met Rick in his life, you see, right? God, they had a studio, didn't they? More Fearless at one time, those two. No, Rick had a studio. Rick had a studio, but Fred was in there with him at one time. No, Fred wasn't in there then. Fred ah. just came in. Fred so used to come in. He was in a partnership with a fellow. Who was the fellow who was in partnership with Rick, anyway? Charlie. Charlie, so that yeah, yeah. Charles. Charles, yeah. 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 That's right. He was in club. So Riggs decided to to uh, do the roof one day and paint the ceiling. So. Yeah. Now, Fred had never met Riggs in his life. So. Yeah. Never. 
Fred comes in to talk to Charles about to do some recording. Yeah. And in the meantime, Rig's up there and there's a fucking ladder and he's like, oh, pissed up, paint on the whole thing, paint and decks and just have the face decorated and the face is So he sits down with his piano friend because Charles was saying, what kind of things you want to record? I just play with my friend. He's talking about playing, then, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fred, play, 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 play this. And as he's painting, Rig says, that is a wrong chord, that should be a nine, put a nine to the letters, a 13 to that, you find it's much better. That's lovely, the fucking painters out of the house to play like, you know. I said, oh, this is, no, we don't have the, he said, the fucking painter, what does he know about Boogie music? Yeah. And he said, well, just try it with him. I saw Pop from it, said, fuck it, he's right, he said, how does he know that, like the painter? I didn't even know he was painting, you know. I can believe it. And Charles said, no, he's not a painter, he's Ricky Mallow. He said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> He used to go around doing things like that. I can't believe it. Yeah. He used to walk in clubs with any group band yeah. playing a tune. As he walked in, say, that's in three flats. I can't be able to walk in. <laughs> he had the pitch, is he? He only played it a few times with BAT. Unbelievable. Yeah, I watched him come. He knew him and the Macarilla, I think it was. Oh, he's a, yeah, he's a wonder. Yeah. Brig was something else, you know. I, I never ceased to wonder at Brig, you know. Oh, he was. I said to Cher, the other night I was out with her, I was there, and I said, do you know him either? I would wish I had a course of your husband's talent, that'd have been great. <laughs> and she said, oh no, she doesn't know, she's not a lot of music. I said, oh, you believe me, yeah. you know, he was a oh. part genius, him, you know, he's, uh, yeah. he's incredible, right, I think. Let's get back to you, then, anyway. so, okay, so, you, you, you come out the army in 47, in 45. No, 47. Uh, 47, you come out, you start about. No, I went to the drafting rooms. You went to the grafting rooms? Ah, so you went to the grafting rooms? Yeah, you see, before the drafting rooms, I'd, I'd been, I'd, I'd played a book of out in the grafting rooms, but not regular. Yeah. Pen on things. Um, Tony Wharton was the drummer there. That's right, yeah. I, mean, I know it's like that. Well, Tony Wharton was the drummer there, you yeah. see, when I went to there. And when I came up to the army, Malcolm Munro was the governor of the... Uh, yeah, I've got this up, exactly. Malcolm Munro was the governor of the drafting rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the, the boss man there, you know. Yeah. Um, lovely fella, Munro, because I used to, as a kid, I used to go there and play with the band. He used to, well, while well, I was in the army, I took a sextet, during the war, I took a sextet in there with Bobby Platt to do one night of there, you know. Really? Yeah, with Alan Brain, two of the Red Sax Yes, yeah, yeah, Alan yeah. Alan Brain and Bobby Platt, and we had a good What, was that still your band? It was a sextet out of the army, yeah. yeah. Right, the right the night. Yeah, it was just the, oh, the, 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 the Imperial Club sextet, it was yeah. called. Yeah, <laughs> right, that's <laughs> I can remember the year. The Imperial Club Sexer, and we, we took it into the draft room for a one last time while we were in the army. You know? yeah. And I used to play in the draft room a bit odd time, not regular. Yeah. And Tony was an official song. Yeah, right, yeah. But he got on a bit then, Tony. Yeah. When I come out, Malcolm Munro said to my father, What's uh, what's he going to do? Um, oh, he said to my father, Oh, my father died, Tony. Yeah. Right? He might come out, he said to me, come and see, yeah, I'm come and see me. He said, What are you going to do now? So I'm probably going to London. I've got intended to go to London to live then, you know. They're all going back to London those days, Bobby Platt and that, you know, so yeah. they're going back to the Bobby went with the, when he went with the Ted Ken McIntosh band first. Yeah, yeah. In Nottingham. Then yeah. he joined the Heath band, he took Baker's place, he did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobby. And I came back to Liverpool because I was married and my wife was having a baby then. Right. So I decided to stay in Liverpool. So my mother said, Would you like to? So I said, well, I can't work here. I don't want to do this because. Um, Tony's here, you know, Tony's yeah. working, and I certainly don't want to poach on this, I wouldn't yeah, do that, you know. Yeah, right. I'd say, I'm a young fella, he's older than me, you yeah, know. Yeah, and yeah. move on and do something else. So, so he said, well, so I'd like you here anyway. So I said, well, you can't do that, because Tony's here. So he said, the governor, well, we'll use the two of you. I said, well, I could use the two of us, for Christ's sake, and the two drums in the one band. Yeah. And he said, well, we can, the, uh, Tony can do half the night, and you can do half the night. And the both of you, both of you, I'd like you here. Because I used to sing as well, and I used to yeah. focus on that. Oh, did Tony make it then? Well, he said it was all right, he didn't yeah. seem to mind that, you know, yeah. he was getting on a bit, but he seemed to be okay, so I didn't leave after night, then leave after night. Right. Because I was a more modern drunk, because I was a younger fellow at the time, right. you see. Know. I didn't meet until about 1950. Tony's a nice man, lovely man, Tony. And his son. I got on fine with him, yeah. he's a lovely fellow. Yeah. yeah, we shared the job for a while, Tony, right? Yeah, Pete, he had two lads, Pete and... Um, I didn't know them. Yeah, two lads. I knew his wife very well, too. His wife was a bit odd. I remember that. She's the wine that we were school. She used to have a long nose, didn't she? Yeah, long, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's the wine that school does. I saw him in the Banyan Sea one night. Yeah? When he was the manager. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Some, you, you, I, cause I had a shock when I saw him. Yeah. He retired. But he retired eventually, because he was getting on to it, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he just retired. And when I he played with his sons, yeah. Yeah, well, oh, when he retired, yeah. I took the, the job all permanently. The so when was this? Ooh. I was after about 48. 
Um, when did Sony leave? A few years later. And then you years. took over the post full time? Then I took the job, and then I was so in this the full-time. early 50s? Yes, and I was there for 56. Okay, playing full-time? I played full-time. Okay. Six nights a week and two afternoons a week. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I used to get all the big bands there. Well, we'll just go with the Lacana. Pardon? Was there a band next door? Yeah, there, were, there was. Uh, Johnny Hilton went in there, can't I, with a trio. Right. With a trio. That's right. I Johnny Hilton trio. Yeah. But they had big bands as well. That, um, Sonny Swan. Remember, he had a big band there. No, no. They were all Mecca bands. He was Mecca only. That's right. Then I left Grafton yeah. when Mecca took over the Grafton. So, uh, yeah. And they took over the Grafton. Know, oh, yeah. The lock was Mecca, yeah. Uh, the Grafton. The Grafton was taken over by Mecca in, in 56. So, Red out. Oh, I left in 56. Okay, so you're out. I, I, I was nine years there, actually, from 47 to 56, right? I was nine years in Grafton. Okay. We had an 18 piece band. So, there, six you know. nights, two days. We, we had a hell of a band there, an 18 piece band, it was. No. <laughs> we had eight brass, five saxes. Ian Hayward was with us. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ian and Hayward, boys. Yeah. I've got quite a bit of research material on the earlier stuff because yeah. um, I hear from Ian quite a lot now. Yeah. He rings me a lot, you know. Mm. He was in Brighton. Yeah, I know I've seen him. Oh, he's a bit uh, over the top sometimes. Yeah, boss player. He's a good player, but always, he, he comes to stage with me sometimes, he's always really, he's very good, he always likes to ring me, he's like, I am. Yeah. You know, he's like, I don't want to look after you, I don't know why he says this. You look up to me for Christ's sake, boy. I don't know, uh, you were my bloody mentor in the early days. He was just like, <laughs> well, he was only a kid, you see, when yeah. he joined our band, and um, looked after him. And I used to tell him to get real because those that he didn't really fucking about he was. Where did they all get their experience from, Red? Did they, were they all oh, yeah. players, all these, all these players? Well, just the environment, just the musical environment, was Oh, it? yeah. But they yeah. were well, the Hamer boy because they were in the Grafton Band, you see, because Mrs. Will Faber, she was the sons and she was the band leader, you know. Yeah. And Munro was a relation. They were, they were, they were, see, Malcolm Munro's name was Murphy, who was Will Faber's brother. Right, okay. But the family name was Murphy, you see. Right. They changed this to Hayden and they changed this to Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> so they changed there and he was the governor of the Grafton, you see. Right. Because Wilf died. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, he's had a new money, and Wilf. Yeah. And then Murphy, his wife, was yeah. a cow there. She took over the band as band leader, you know. Because she died. Just, just, a, just a quick um, detour. Oh, we, had an 18, we had an 18 piece band in there, eight glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chef Slippin there was a good singer. He was Chip and Dale, the singer. Chip, Chip and Dale, he used to be with the Sunday Lipton band before the war, you know. He was a, he was a name then, but he was in, he was in the Grafton band for years. Does the name roughly mean anything to the drummer? Roughly? No. No, I'm trying to trace somebody down. I reckon there was a gig above no. um, Burton's in County Road. Yes, there was. There was a, there was a, there was a dance hall. Yeah, well, I, I managed to track down the, the, the person who records he started it. And, and they reckon, this guy reckons it was the, the drummer was and his brother. And the name was Roughly. No, no, that wasn't Roughly. Uh, this guy came out behind and he said, it was Roughly. Oh, Roughly, no. Do you know, he was an old name, wasn't he? I'm trying to think of that was there. There was, um, I can't think of what to call that. It was over Burton's in there. That's right, yeah. Mm. yeah. It's very famous. Anyway, you left, let's get back to you. You left in, fi in 56, Six. after nine years. So, and I know you sang. So, 56, it has got to be something happened there between 56 and 61, because by that time, you were in a national reno. Well, no, nah, well, no, but when I left the Grafton, yeah. there was a band leader in the Oral Park Ballroom. Oh, Christ. Paul Vaughan. Do you remember him? Oh, PB, yeah. Do you remember? Paul Vaughan. Do you remember Paul Vaughan? Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. Good people. Yeah. Knock out, so big guitar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jewish boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I joined. Did you play guitar? Eh? And I joined Paul there. You went to the LPB? Yeah. After I left the Grafton. Oh, wow. you know, Paul said, don't join me. And I said, no, the money's not the same, because the money was great. You know, it's the way it is. It's yeah, I thought they found great money. And um, Alan Branscombe came in that band with me eventually. Paul Vaughan's band? Yeah. Alan Branscombe, OK. Branscombe did for a while, because he worked with me a lot, you know. Um, well, why did you leave? Because you didn't like the promise for you? What, the craft? We yeah. had, well, no, we had to leave, because Becca bought the ballroom. Oh, right. Oh, they tried to who they are. Because they brought their own band. Okay. Okay. So, Alan did Paul Vaughan's band? Paul had a, what, five, six, seven, about nine piece band. Nine, nine, okay. Eight nine piece band. Okay, so you're, you're in Paul's one band at the LPB. That's right, yeah. Right now, okay, how did we get to that? From that to the all singing, all dancing, don't get played? The play was? Yeah. Ah, well, we? there we go. So, wait a minute, I'm not okay. to go there. <laughs> While I was in Paul's one, yeah. 
the, the guy that owned the ballroom was a fellow called Harry Dickinson. You know, he owned, uh, he owned, he had, um, he had the, well, he had the old park ballroom. He had, um, we had to get a ballroom all in. But then, yeah, um, he also had uh, a church seat over. Yeah, there's a ballroom there over Burton's there. It's not Burton's now. It's in Chelsea. What's it called? In the oh, Christ. A lot of sirens behind. Yeah, Harlequin ballroom. The Harlequin. The Harlequin that was in the Chelsea there. Yeah. And I, you know. That was it as well. That Dicky on that. Yeah. Well, Paul was the MD for all the ballrooms. You see. Okay, Paul. Uh, oh, oh right, MD for all. Okay. For, for all the Dickens' ballrooms. Right. Know. Okay. So uh, you've got you're the drummer with this guy. I'm with Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Th then now. What happened then? Dickinson acquired the Plaza in St Helens, which is there. Uh, oh, yeah, was it was a, a, th a cinema, but turned into a ballroom. It was right? a big ballroom as well. Right now, Paul asked me, would I leave him and take a band into the Plaza ballroom? Oh my God! And that's what I took Brand School with me then. So, you, so, so, are you red now? Are you red, Carter? Oh yeah, red red Carter. Red. Red. it was all nose red. Right? Takes red. own band. Okay, right, okay. I, and the, uh, I went to the... Uh, when was this? We got 56. Oh, well, let's see, this would be about... Um, let me see about this, I'll tell you now. 56. Mm. By the way, Ruggie Miles was with me in the, in the Old Park Ball. Was what, the is, that when, you, oh, is that your first gig with him? Oh, I'd worked with... Yeah, after I really first started working with Rick. Oh, well, that's interesting. In right? the 50s with Rick, yeah, with Paul Vaughan, yeah. Because he was Paul's piano player, I think. V A U G N. V A U G N, yeah, Borg. Borg, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. fair enough. Paul, so, I you, mean, is that Paul? so you get a band with Branscombe? Well, then he asked me, well, I, Rick stayed with him, yeah. for, he stayed with uh, Paul. Rick stayed there. And then he got with the drummer and asked me, would I take a band yeah. to, um, the Plaza St. to the Plaza St. Helens? And I took Branscombe with me. How many people? Jeff Oakes, uh, Johnny Elders with me. Oh, was he? Yeah. Johnny Elders. Good band, I had about, I had about uh, four. Five, six, seven piece band there. I'd have seven piece band there. Brad's going to have all the writing for you, haven't he? Old writing score. It's great writing, Brad's got What were you doing? Were you doing um, it, that was probably the, the tunes of the day. Uh, Ricky Mallows was probably the greatest musician, really, speaking. The greatest musician now, really, was Brad's score. Yes, that's a musician. Genius. Yeah, right. I mean, let's face it. He's yeah. An enormous saxophone player. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful, vibraphone player. Great piano player. Dan Griffin, the piano. Yeah. Vibes. And he played very good drums as well, you know. Alan was a genius, a great writer. And what would they do? Were you doing original? Or, or were you he doing just go out the army then. Were, you do, were they doing, was he writing arrangements? Oh for, yeah, for the 70s, 80s band, yeah. What, what, what would you describe the, the style as? It was, uh, it was like a um, swing style, really. Like a swing, made, oh, yeah. Yeah, made swing style. Yeah, but not for me, boo Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because they were playing all the changes. So the really were bad, uh, funny little thing with the landscape. So he originally was, he came into the band with the alto because he was a great saxophone player. Yes. As yes. a tenor player, he was after an alto. Yeah. Lovely alto player. Right. And we had a piano player who was coming to the name. God changed us. You yeah. can't play this bastard. Yeah. Oh, can, what? Can you get another alto player? A good one. I, said, I will then revert to piano. At that time, I didn't realize how good he was on piano. He said, Yeah, I'll take piano. Because yeah, right. this is a ridiculous thing, which is so mm -hmm. well, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I brought Jeff Oakes in, who was a very good player. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I brought Jeff in, and also I put Bransko on piano. And <laughs> now the back was sweet. Now Bransko was right on the other end, playing beautiful piano. I couldn't believe it. I didn't play piano. Well, Jesus Christ, you know. Can, can I ask you a question? Okay, because yeah, let's go. Bass players at the time. Yeah, yeah. Jack Martin. Great fellow, Jack. Great sense of humour. Jack Martin, he was great fellow, Jack. He was at St. Helens. Okay. So, uh, and, uh, then I just said, no, I did it like this, that was a funny thing. That I, I used to do a lot of vocals. I had the drum, and, and Branscombe would say to me, this is not good, this. You know, you're singing there, uh, behind the drum, you've got to get out there to sing. I said, well, I can't do that. Yeah, I can't do that. Really okay, so it's not a problem. It's supposed to be not a problem. So, well, what we do, when you go to your vocals, I'll whip off piano I'll play the drums. and I'll score the band so that you can't tell the difference I've left and I'll play drums. I said, you play drums? And he said, well, a little bit. I mean, originally I started on drums, so I didn't know that. I just said, you play piano. So he said, well, I play drums as well, you see. I said, do you? I didn't know that. So it'd be all right, but I said, oh, yeah, it'll be all right, because I play my back. You know, it's not really, so. 
I go and try this. So the first night I did it, you know, I get out there, it gets on the wrong but I've never heard like, well, I, I, it. Come alive. It's tremendous pudding. It's all like, get off the show. Get off the show. Get off the show. Get off the show. You brought him. Sick of you, you know. And then he touches him. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, but it, I mean, he's a legend, I think, isn't he? I said, stop it, really. Yeah. He goes, what's all that? Like, can't you play simple as that? You know, you show up real. You know, it's all that. Yeah. yeah. But you like that, Harry. Mean, it's wonderful, you know. And then what happened then? It Paul seems like they were all good fun as well. They were decent oh, stars yeah. as well. And I thought, what happened then? Paul Vaughan had some great ideas, you see, with the refuse, and then he said, oh, we're doing well at St. Helens, the band was good, and yeah, like, yeah, packed yeah. the place, you know. Yeah. How many nights a week out of them? Oh, we were doing six nights a week. Nice, six okay. nights a week, you just up there, you know. Oh, and then what happened then? I have to do this tonight. Uh, to what happened then was funny, because this Paul Vaughan, again, with these bright ideas, yeah. He heard the band I had at St. Helens, yeah. and he heard Grand Scum a lot of it, and he said to me, and he had a band, because he had his own band at the other part of Paul. With, with Rick, yeah. With Rick, yeah. yeah. So he had a great idea. He said, Rick would like to run a band for a while, so he said, I'm thinking of doing this. I'm thinking of putting Rick in the plaza, and right. then form a band, and put a band in there, and bring you back to the Arnold Park. I said, just for me, he said, no, most of you are Oh, you want my plan? He said, yeah, I want plan, it's good. <laughs> and either we'll be done together. You know. Yeah, right. So we moved us back to our Mar- apartment, and everything was happy there. Cause and then Ricky had to... And then Ricky had to put a band in the Mars and Ellen there. Right, okay. So Ricky put a band in the in the Ellen's band, and he had a good band there, because he was a good player himself. Yeah. And, but was it Riggy? Or Rigby, his name was Rigby. It was Rigby, wasn't well, it? Was Rigby. But we all called him Rigby, didn't no, we? Yeah, but his name yeah. was Rigby, right? Yeah, it's funny when you use it. Yeah, no, it is. So look. And I, then I came back to them, I came back into the other park again then, with Branscombe and my band virtually. And this Paul Vaughan. And Paul Vaughan leader. So he's leading my band now, isn't he? Right, okay. But I'm done. Yeah, okay. He was a great singer, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Knock out. Yeah. Good looking fellow, too. Yeah. Jewish fellow. Yeah. Uh, mad about it. Yeah, right. Good yeah. Missy, good yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and he, I came back to the Allen Park Ballroom with, with Branscombe then on piano. Of course, Paul would delight because he had Branscombe with him now if he <laughs> wanted to. He, yeah. I mean, he might break, but he also wanted Branscombe yeah. and all of it. Yeah, right. Yeah. And we came back there, you see. Then he says to me one day, Paul, I'm playing away. I was always with Paul, you see. Yeah. But then he wouldn't move without me then. Yeah, yeah, right, Paul, okay. Paul, Good, yeah. And he said, I'm fed up with all this here. There's no food to this what's happening here now. I said, well, you're moving. He said, I said, you're moving. What are you moving? He said, I want to go out to bank business. I said, why, what are you going to do? I mean, Jewish fellow, we want to finance <laughs> and like that. I want to do an act, a good act. Right, yeah. But to do it, I've got to move from here. I've got to go out to London, because you're a London boy, boy. Yeah, right, OK. I want to go out to London. Do you want to go with me? Yeah. I said, what for? He said, reform an act. I said, we've been talking to him. So I've been in London recently. Yeah. So Better with a fellow from his English, but he lived, lived most of his life in Canada with a fellow called Johnny Lester. But he's not a piano player, he is. Right, okay. But he's really, you think he was American because he's already got like an accent, but originally he was born in London. And we want another another one. Right. And we want a quartet. So you and got, we want the, drummer, you got the piano player, you got the guitar artist, and you needed the bass player. We need the bass player, you see. So he yeah. said, Do you want to go and do it? I said, Well, I'm taking the chance here. He said, Well, we're all taking the chance. It's a How many kids do you have at this time? I had two. Yeah, I had two. I said, We'll take the gamble there. He said, It's a gamble. We're really yeah. life's a gamble. Did like, you live over here then? In Boston, yeah. You still lived oh, over yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, yeah. So I said, I'm taking the gamble here, you know. Christ, I'm not, you know. So he said, uh, well, we all are, so I am. I'm, yeah, giving, I'm, giving, I'm giving the MD of all these ballrooms. You are, you're getting well paid, you are. Yeah, I'm giving the MD of all the ballrooms. Right, okay. Throw them all in. Right, okay. I to, I'm convinced we can do this, we can do it, make it successful. Right. And so I'm also a well in with Tito Burns. Who was Cliff Richards' manager? Yes. Uh, 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 an agent. 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 Because, you know, Tito was originally a jazz accordion player. Yes, yes, Tito yes. yes. I've got Tito. a video of him somewhere. Pretty great player, he was. Yeah, jazz yeah, player. Yeah. He was an agent now. Yeah, yeah. And he's also, who's in Lee with the. Um, he was, a, he was, he was he really got uh, to great heights then, you know, Tito's an agent. Yeah, I know, yeah. Because he was with the... Uh, Mega. He oh, had, yeah. he had uh, Al McComa, didn't he? Oh, he had all kinds yeah. of people. I mean, he was, he was right-hand man, really, to the, what's the name, the Grades. Yes. 
Yeah. No, Lou Messi yeah. played. Yeah. It was in with them as well. Yeah. So. Well, it was very much a kosher business then, wasn't it? Yeah, his, his business was in Waterstone. The interesting thing was it worked much better. Oh, no. <laughs> and he had his office in Waterstone, but he was a bloody crook, you know. It's, oh, did I? Come on, there he got a fucking crook. I mean, you know, tea's always the fucking best of life through his teeth, you know. Yeah, of course, yeah. He'd say, that's the fellows, you're all at the um, Empire and Pool next week, and he'd say, oh, plates at home for the week, and he said, oh, the contacts in there, so you have a look at it, he said, yes, shut the door. Ha, 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 You'll use carbon as you know. Oh, it's just the money you're doing all right then. It's, that's still there, isn't it? So then we've had a base player. Now they don't carve you, but they don't make any money. I know. <laughs> so then we've had, we've had a base player called Roy Dexter. God, all right. Uh, Roy Dexter was with the Mac Camilla band years and years ago. The original Mac was used to it as Mac Camilla, Yeah. You're know, the first Penny. guy I ever saw at uh, the cabin. Who? Oh. For me. Oh. First, I was 15, I think. That's oh. Mac Camilla. Did you see that cadet? First thing I ever saw was like, you know, right. the band singing, George. Yeah. George, yeah. But well, Roy was there. Yeah. And Roy Dexter yeah. also yeah. worked with all the better, all, and he'd work with all the famous, but all, Roy had worked with all the famous bands in London, you know. Yeah. And all, you know, he was in the bloody Embassy Club with this band, and he was in the uh, bloody Mayfair. So where are we now? What year are we now? Well, it's in 1958 now. Okay, we've got Paul, uh, um, Red. Johnny Lester was the Johnny. piano player. Lester, Pierre. And Roy, and Roy Dexter. I've got that Roy Dexter. Okay, you've got a quarter. He did the bass player sing, by the way. Oh, very good singer. Oh, he was a great singer. So they get four singers? He was, a, he was a great personality, too. He could impersonate as well, the bass player. Wow. And he was very, very humorous, Roy. Yeah. Marvellous fellow. Real cockney now, back in the yeah. Lovely he was, though. I loved Roy. So you've got a four piece all singing? Oh, yeah. We all sang. Where did you learn the singing then? Did you just pick it up? Did you just... Oh, well, I always sang with everyone from the early days. I, I, Natural I, harmony? Or well, did no. You, did I, you just I, get I, into it? Before that, I was a solo act. I, you know, I used to do a little act on me on dancing. I was a dancer as well. I used to dance and sing as well. Was you a kid? kid? As a kid, yeah. yeah. I played drums. Played drums. And the sunny cars of the pocket drawer. <laughs> <laughs> That's going in, by the way. Sunny oh, cars in the pocket. Oh, great. No. Oh, see, you know what that's about? No, great, why not? No, no. And, uh, it, was, it, was, fuck it, was, man. it was funny. And I used to do, perform then. You see, I'd do shows, yeah. little shows and that and perform. That's why I, I used to sing. That's why I sang. I can never then Paul was a great singer, though. Yeah. He was a really So you've got four, people, you've got four singers. Yeah. You've got, you're in London. Yes. It's 1958. Yeah. He's got the Emma Tito. Yeah. Well, he's our agent. Yeah. So yeah. you start a quartet. Well, we started rehearsing for oh, yes, of course, yeah. three months. We were rehearsing for three months in London, you know, with the quartet. What do you want? Cancer Cancer routines, routines. Last? Or cancer routines. We were doing stuff then, you know. You know, you see them now. The uh, who the ones that well, boys own and all that. Oh no, before that, I mean, they would do all the impersonations that we were doing all that gear in then in '58. Um, who the one could think of? The famous ones. They better hell of a name for themselves. Doing uh, what? Vocal quartet. Yeah, doing vocals. Comedy things and the person. Oh, four freshmen. No, no, that's the American vocal group. This is English. Um, they never oh, Bad Nights. Yeah, Bad, yeah. We were doing all that gear. We've done before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've had better musically as well. We used to. Well, because we Lester was a great piano player. Yeah, not yeah. Great piano player. Lester, yeah. you know, brought us a good bass player. So he played uh, not collective bass. Yeah, was right. Yeah, was up right. Yeah. Um, so I played a set of drums too. Yeah, yeah. Didn't sit down. So you just played the snare, really? Well, yeah. really, when I had a cocktail kit, yeah. with a cocktail kit, the snare, when I had Tom Tom on the floor. Is that what it was called? Yeah, cocktail kit. Yeah. So what was it, snare drum? Snare drum and a high hat. Yeah, right. So Brushes. you could play it standing up, you see, with yeah. just pedals on it. Yeah, right. Made especially, and then uh, the Tom Tom. So I, I didn't have a lot of kit. Which no, but he not. Enough to yeah. play. Yeah. Because you know, we still used to stand up, we never sat down. Right. I wasn't sitting down, but we would stand up. Was it bow tie? We were all, oh, yeah, we had really? well, we, well, we had flashy suits on, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, right, okay. Uh, and, you know, we all, the problem was that those days, we used to, uh, you know, now everybody has their own microphone, obviously, of course, that's gone on about now, they're all clipped onto it. Oh, yeah. In those days, you used a central microphone. That's right. And that's all the difficulty of getting close enough in. That's why we yes. always stand up and get, get close enough in. Of course, in. yeah. Because it wasn't easy those days, yeah. you know. Well, I can remember, I, I've got some the early people that didn't have microphones. Yeah, yet, I've so. got the Kane Brothers and all that on table, and quite a lot of that early stuff. Yeah, well, we... Um, and that, you can see that yeah. there isn't a... But it sounded much more natural. Yeah. Because you have the bang of the voice. They weren't mic'd up, you see, right? yeah. like they are today. And some arse at the front yeah. fucking up the mix. So we did, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So we, uh, then we were, well, we did very, very, we did three months. Right. Rehearsal. Yeah, rehearsal. Yeah, rehearsal rooms there, yeah. you know. And then First 
Tito brought uh, all kinds of ladies in to see us, and other ladies, you know, because he wanted to just, he, mm -hmm. him being our lady was far was out to other ladies. What was your first gig then? I think it was American Bases, really. Oh, American Bases, yeah, okay, in so. London, you know. Oh, right. American Bases, that, was, that gave us the experience, of course, to American Bases. You know. And how about home from here? Because we used to work was, uh, on American Bases, we were working with all kinds of other people. Uh, just in Britain or all over Europe? Mainly Britain. Mainly, mainly Britain. Britain. There, at that point, at that point, in London, mainly, okay. outside London. You know. Okay, fair enough. Um, and then we did the broad, we then went to Germany. Uh, but we do doing theatres as well, now we've got the theatres. So, you, you, oh, that's what I want to say. Okay, so the home, the home gigs, not the American bases, what were they? Were they supper clubs or... Were they American theaters? bases? Oh, no, in, in Britain. Oh, in Britain, yeah. theatres, mainly. Mainly a theatre circuit? Yeah, Empire Circus, yeah. Oh, right. Well, I, was the, I was at the Empire in, in Liverpool three times, the Playboys, was there with Cliff Richard. Yeah. And we used to travel with Cliff then, you see, as part of his yeah. bill. Yeah. Because um, Tito was his manager. Uh, you know, people like Frank used to wear the flat guy for the Des O'Connor, all that crowd, you know, they were all of us, that. Yeah, and yeah. Well, it's variety shows. Variety right? shows, yeah. 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 Can you name us a couple of theatres just around the country? Mm -hmm. Around the country, over in Fizzy Park, London, or all of them there. Fizzy Park, the Pan Empire, Leeds Empire. We we, uh, we had a show with Lolly Donovan, we did a tour with Lolly Donovan for a while, but his shows, David Whitfield shows with Oh, yeah. yeah. They were all the top artists then, say they were all, they were all the crowd pullers, they were all the theatres, you know. Yeah, it was the other guy, um, yeah. Dickie Ballantyne. No, we didn't work with Dickie, we knew Dickie, we didn't work with him. How about the Liverpool singers, Lisa Rose? Uh, uh, she was with the Heath Band. Of course, yeah. yeah. She was with the Heath Band. Uh, uh, Alan Townsend. Yeah. No, talk, no uh, Dwayne Eddie, we worked with him quite a bit. The American oh. guitar player. Yeah, I know. Dwayne really. Eddie, yeah. yeah. He was yeah. something about the Empire, we were with him at the Empire. That's funny, that. We were with Cliff Richard at the Empire. You must have been watching, what did you... Hmm. Would it be pertinent to... Right. Did you have any view of these people? So, you, I, I, let me put... Usually. Yeah, because yeah, when, yeah. when I first... Saw, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we didn't say so. When I first saw Tommy Steele, yeah. or the first time I said, it was with Crombie. Yeah. And that was obviously a boss band. You know? Tony Crombie? Yeah. Tom, was he with Tony Crombie? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the original caveman, caveman was it? It was Tony Crombie, was Ronnie Scott. Was that? Yeah, that, they were in that original band. Oh, we must have played with the Tubbs in their cheeks, for Christ's sake. Yeah, well, well, it was like a rock and roll band, a proper rock well, and roll band. Well, there must have been Tubbs in their cheeks, you know, they had their money, really. Oh, ah, yeah, but thing, they so. played, well, it was like uh, rock and roll and everything. Well, Roy was in Joe Brannan. Oh, I, I know, yeah, yeah no, I've got that, I don't worry, I've got that, it's gone in the booth. Who was that? Yeah, um, 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 so, but... Did oh, well, well yeah. you didn't say anything about the music, did you? Well, of course you don't, do you? Because they're the stars. Yeah, so enough said. They're the stars. And they don't know. David Whitfield. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, he filmed them, basically. Yeah, he's Donegan. Yeah, Don Donegan. I thought Donegan was a good, good singer. Good oh, actor. Donegan, he, um, well, had a good guitar. I hated him, but I mean, uh, where was he? Hated him, wasn't he? Right, so was he a bit of a bastard? Was he? Yeah. Really? I'll put that down. Oh, no, of course not, no. Oh, he's a bastard, wasn't he? What? I don't know, he's a uh, big head. Was he? Ah. Uh, you fancy the shows. I, I like the guitar player. Yeah. Well, he, Roy Dexter, the bass player, yeah. play yeah, he he used to play. Lonnie didn't like him at all. He used oh. to say, Lonnie and Alan Tempin has got the peg, you know. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Lonnie, look at that. Oh, great, what a put down. What a bang on you now. Roy <laughs> <laughs> Dexter, I don't put that down. No, come here, it's joking. No, but that text text used to say, like, put Dolly on the table and put the pipe on your nose. Yeah, fuck you. Are you going to grow? You're a little Dolly. Oh, God. He's taking the piss out of him, so he's telling him, they're hating us, man. When you play, man, you get never happy, man. Because Tizo, you see, Tizo was doing the bills, you see. Yeah, of course, he was getting loads of bills away. But Lolly was a star, I mean, no doubt. Yeah, of course, yeah. In fact, we were with him. I think it was Gorman Doncaster with Donegan. Yeah, and I like When he made that very famous settler in My Old Man the Dustman. Really? He recorded it a live theatre. That was, I think it was Doncaster, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. The Gormans, I think it was one of the Gormans. Yeah. And we were with him on that show, and they recorded that like night, they recorded it live on the stage, and that's the recording they kept. And if you hear the recording, the old recording, the Bio Man's recording. Yeah, I've got some, yeah. When you got all the audience in the back, you hear them. Yeah, yeah. And we, 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 were, we were on that show with him, man. Right. Yeah, that was when he recorded that. Because yeah, I remember yeah. them saying they were recording it, uh, the, all the gear was on the side of the stage, Deppard did it. Yeah. And they said afterwards, no, we have to do it live, this, because there's more impact with yeah. the audience yeah. laughing yeah. at all these jokes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You miss me on yeah, I think that was Doncaster, I'm not sure. Doncaster, Gordon Doncaster would have done that live. 
So you're doing great anyway. Oh, we're doing, yeah, we got all the major television yeah. shows. We did the Albert Hogan show, the Vera Lynn show, Charlie Chester show. I must have, I must have seen. I used to watch everything. If anybody played yeah, any all music, it's all it's all recorded, yeah. Really if all anybody played any music, this was yeah. I watched it on the telly. Yeah. See, the Dallas Boys was with oh, uh, most of the time. See, yeah. but then they pulled out one time, and we took their place on our television shows. So oh. the Dallas Boys they used up the label. Better, better. And then, uh, better. Yeah, and then we had Charlie and Vera Lynn was one. We did a few of her shows. Yeah, because she would know the standards. Of the uh, there was a producer called, uh, oh, he was marvelous. He was from the north of England. He then uh, a BBC producer. But he never did a BBC producer. Albert, or oh, Albert Stevens. Yeah. The f when you know, this is I, I, this is a funny story as well. Yeah. But uh, Al was a real rock, a BBC producer, yeah. not director. Yeah. He was real for radio. Like, oh, yeah. fucking, uh, what's it, like, fucking what's the hell here? Like let's have a look in the tear and let's uh, listen to me. Uh, now he said you've got to go and audition for Al Stevens because um, he hasn't seen it. Right. And he, he wants to put you on the Vera Lynch show. He's earned higher. Right. You see. Right. And it's an Italian theme. And this this he's, she's going to do an Italian theme show for a few weeks. Right. Like so we go down there, and we, said, we had a great vocal range of Southland Part Three Parade, but it was a vocal thing. Yeah. They had all the words, you see, and all hard there, with the rest of the So it was really impressive, see. So we go in this rehearsal room in the BBC in London, and Al was there. And he said, Oh, the fucking play, boy, let's see here. I'm fucking doing that, you know, I'm Al Stevenson. Oh, Stevenson, yeah. Hello, but he said, oh, let's see. So we played this and he said, wow, you see. Yeah. So we did this, which was good. Yeah. But he said, well, listen, and he says, when we finished, he said, he's like this. And we said, well, how about that? He said, what the fucking hell? There's a sort of bad bar, so you've got to do with the Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yes. Right. So I said, well, I don't know, we thought you were there as, you know, it hasn't got to be in Italian, you know. It's not going to be in Italian, 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 who do that? He said, oh, what is, oh, so why didn't you do that? So we, we just thought, we like, we like, he said, you like South Park? I said, yeah, I can joke around. That's, yeah, uh, you know, like my show, that crappy shout, that's what he shout, that's all the crappy shout. Let's hear this, you see, so we do that, well, are they? Yeah. Wonderful. That's oh, that's what I want. Great. Okay. You're up, you're marvellous, fellas. Mm -hmm. Love you. I put you on a little bit. Vera will love you, he says. Vera will love you. She, she wants to sing with you, I see, yeah. So the next thing we had an and she said, oh, I'd like to do a number with her. And she did. She's like, well, she's here, a few numbers. Yeah. But in the meantime, I'm in the dressing room, you see. I'm still without the dressing room, yeah. you see. And he's got, he said, he, he pulls me out of the dressing room one day, I was thinking, to me, Red, come here, come and send me with him. He said, what are you Why is he here, sorry? I said, what? He said, I'm sorry, going to be on the show, but yeah. I want you to hear this. Yeah. And I go down, he said, come on, I want you to hear this. See what you think about it. So I go down there, and on the stage is four French horn players from the London film. Right. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they play this concerto thing for, for uh, French songs. And they play it. He said, play, my friends here, what's he playing? What do you do on the show? So, there are very much, 75 fellow, I'm a beautiful player. Yeah, yeah. And this concerto player was fucking marvellous. Yeah. Now. And they finished. And they said to me, what are you doing? And I said, I think it's wonderful. And he said, it's a load of crap. <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> he said, fucking, who's going to listen to that? Back on the real show. He said, not told what they're going to play. And they don't believe They're going to play the lady of the fucking tramp. That's it. I said, you're joking. He said, yeah. Play the lady and they all in you. He said, ah, great. That's something. You're mad, you are, Stevenson. You know. He's only doing the business, didn't he? Well, he's doing the business. This is a lovely crap, that he said. He's a shirt to all my shows. Do you just remember the Dan Marino? The lovely fellow Albert. Oh, oh, I don't remember. He's dead now, unfortunately. Do you remember the band from down there called the McGill Five? Do you remember that? We used to work with them. They're friends of mine. You really? Oh, back yeah. from the Cabaret yeah. Club. Really? Yeah. They came to the Cabaret Club many, many times. Yeah. I used to vote from the Cabaret Club. They were around about that time, weren't they? They, they were sort of based on Marini, weren't they? I had them in the 60s, I had them. Yeah. In the Cabaret Club. 
the book into the book. Oh, yeah, I used to, I was the agent. Oh, you've got to get to that. Yeah. Yeah. So you're doing great, and you have this terrible accent. Well, yeah, that's why I left the act, actually, with, with, it, uh, with Upper, Upper Hayford, uh, Upper Hayford in London, the uh, mountain base. Yeah. And, uh, we've been doing a show there. You're going back to London? And now, who arrived, I used to travel back with some other boys in yeah. cars and that, because I've lived in London. Yeah. And Cliff's manager, yeah. Jack Conway, arrived, and he was our manager too, you see, he's our road manager, Jack, because yeah, he worked with Tito Hans. I can remember the stuff, but okay. it's the, I have a terrible tool with, with names. Jack Conway. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And he was your manager as well. Well, yeah, he managed us to. Uh, well, he was, I would Tito Bird. He, he used to work for Tito. So. Right, okay. And he was, he was, everywhere we went out on the road, he'd come with us, Jack. So. And he gives you the lift. Well, he said to me, don't go back with the usual people you sell with. Come I want to talk to your business, he said. Oh. And I'll be leaving. I'm going, I'm going to drop you off in London, he said. And then I'm, he lived in Brighton, you know, yeah. I'll carry on to Brighton. Yeah, right. So I said, well, he said, that's all business with you. In the meantime, we can see it. I he was pissed and really was. He followed a van. Oh, uh, shit. Off another musician, Al somebody. Yeah. Al Gray, musician. And uh, he followed Tom Al Gray? Al Gray. Band of the day? No, no, no. Al is a great. He's a good musician. He's a van. He bought this van off him, you see. Unknown to me, it wasn't fucking insured, the van. Oh, you joke. Can I put this in there? Can I put this hey. in yeah. But I wouldn't put that about not being sure. Okay. Most okay. Well, look, I, you're going to get a copy of this, and you're going to go through it. But I wouldn't put that in. Yeah. Sure, yeah. this is not bad. It's a pain in the arse now. But well, it was one of those things. But Jack drove me, and I waited for Jack, and uh, uh, him and I, and Johnny Lester, the piano player, was yeah. in the back Grand. of the band. And I sat in the front with him, and that's the thing I know. I fell asleep, and I didn't know another thing until about ten days later, and I was in hospital. Because he was, he had to, what he'd done, I found out later, he, he, it was about two o'clock in the morning, he'd always take my bloody car and, and it's a bloody big lorry head on, you know. Christ. Um, he was pissed, he must have been pissed. But killed, he was killed. Oh, he was killed out of right, he picked him up on pieces, him, you know. And what about the fellow in the back? He wasn't too badly injured, but I had very badly injured, yeah. you know. What, what I was sitting in the front, I had my legs broken, I had my face smashed in the head, I had head injuries and everything. Like so it was legs and head with you? Pardon? Legs and head? Oh yeah, yeah, I had my fever broken. Just fever, which is the biggest problem you've yeah. you. So this is the end of the act? Well, not the end of the act. They kept, they, eventually, they, 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 well, for that short period, then they got somebody else in my place. So what, when was the 60? 60. And that, was being, that would be 59, 60, that. 59, 60. Okay, 59. 10 days out. And then uh, they reformed, somebody else took my place. They had to get somebody else in. Oh, I wasn't okay. a particularly a drummer, it was another guitar player, it was a 40. Okay. Like, uh, I like got a Roy Lance for each other. Well, it was at my place then, I can't think now. But I wasn't. Because then after that, they joined the Mark of a Wise show after that, they did. But not with me, I wasn't in it, you know. It's the Playboy show? Oh, yeah, they, yeah, they were doing pantomime. We were booked for pantomime, but oh. with the Mark of a Wise. But I didn't do it because I was in hospital. So you come back to, presumably, you come back up here? Well, I was a long while in uh, London in the National Orthopedic Hospital, the uh, Stanmore. Okay. But the accident was intriguing. Well, no. Up at, well, I just left up a hay from the American base, yeah. and they moved me into Tring the night we had the accident. Tring is just outside of London. Yeah. Then they moved me from Tring, because I was very badly injured, yeah. into the uh, Na National Orthopaedic Hospital in Stanmore, which yeah. is the main one in London for orthopedic, you know, because right. they wouldn't face smashed in. Right. And um, I was there then, I was, I was hospitalised there for quite a while, because they couldn't move me, because they were doing operations on me all the time. First of all, on my head, and then on my leg, you know. Because I broke my little thing could amputate my bloody leg at one point. So really? That bad? Well, well, you just you had a very smart ass bloody surgeon who come and said, I'd look at your. Um, don't put this down. No, no. It's a humorous thing, I thought. He's, he's, a, he's a very eminent no. um, bone man, you know, and he came in and he said, uh, I don't know, he said, they sent for me in the middle of the night to see you. Was, I think he was sad. Somebody said he was Churchill's bloody orthopedic surgeon. <laughs> And he said, like, I don't know why they said, why did they send for me in the middle of the night to come here, but the years, you were in a special place. I'm like, oh, fuck that now, this is a week later, yeah. I'm fired up, can't yeah. talk. Yeah. Yeah. And I had my legs up in traction and everything, yeah. you know, like a white dummy I was in the bed, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah. I read your uh, details, and he said, you know, a musician, you play drum, and you dance, you should get a dancer. And I was like, I couldn't knock me out. Yeah. I was just wondered how you felt about dancing on one leg, you said. Oh, <laughs> God. Joke. Yeah. I said, you sound like your leg's bad. I thought, I'm going to have to amputate it. I said, what? I said, 
say you're wrong. Anyway, it's a hell of a good chat to say because that's the problem, you know, it's never nice. But I'm more willing to make your head than your leg at all. Just a quickie. You said that the quartet did routines. Were you still sort of tapping around, Anson? Were you, were what, you, later? With the Playboys? Oh, I started with Playboys, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just did, did you get any formal training for dancing? Pardon? Did you get any formal training? No, not just really. Up? No, Who finished? Yeah, I used to watch three dozen yeah. people a bit in the middle there. I used to associate with other dancers then, and, you know, I used, yeah. I used to just pick them up. I used to go in time steps and live like that, you know. Amazing. It's the time steps. It's, it seems yeah. to be that that's how it was done, really. Yeah. For the most part, people who were very good. You find out people who were good at this natural ability. Well, you find out a bit of it, they used it, they went for lessons then, really. Yeah. I didn't go for tap dance. Yeah. I wasn't the world beast as a tap dancer, yeah. but he did dance. Well, I wasn't what, what a great dancer, but yeah. I was dancing with great songs, you know. Yeah, right. Like, you know. Right. Um, for the fact, maybe. Okay, of course, yeah. See, but I was a good dancer, but it's always picked up that, you know. So what happened then, Red? You, 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 come on, you, you come on back when, when well, you... Well, I was transferred eventually back to the Liverpool to make the Infirmary. They're off and stuff there now. The, uh, the, back, because uh, they had to start, eventually, after three or four months, they transferred back here to the Okay. These are the because my family was here, basically. Yeah, because so I had to... I, I, they transferred me by ambulance. On stretcher, yeah. by train, yeah. and ambulance picked me up at uh, Lancet right. and took me into Pitney General. You know. So, right. how long in total were you in hospital? Oh, on and off, Christ, uh, ooh, about over a year, you know, and off was in and out all the time. Did you know. get any twinges later, Red? Like? Not, not bad, not bad. Not bad. Yeah. One leg shorter than the other by half an inch, because yeah. you know, when you break your femur, yeah. you can never miss a bone like that. Yeah. So, it's going like that. Yeah. And depending on how much they can do it, yeah, sure. Right. Like, well, they will look at me and say, you've only got half an inch, yeah. it's about an inch, it's not, you won't really need to, you'll walk, yeah. you'll walk it out, they said. You know? Yeah, right, I know, yeah. yeah. But he said, um, you're lucky at that, because we saw we did come out of it. But what were they worried about, they was a head, he had terrible head injuries. Yeah. Fractured My skull. wife was looking at me, you know, she, I didn't realise, I was a later, I heard this story, but much later, like, oh, I'm conscious. Yeah, right, right, yeah. And she went to come to London overnight, you see, because yeah. they'd probably be dead in the really echo, you know. Oh, God. Because the echo rang up, because the main interest was Cliff Richard's manager, you see. Then they sent the echo people, and it's amazing how the press fly now, because yeah, they yeah. nice. So you, you just had, uh, you, you got Cliff Richard's manager, had been killed uh, in a car crash, and so I thought, this one, this is the answer. He's had a Liverpool boy there with you, in the hospital, yeah. in the hospital. He was with him at the time. He was with a man called Playboy, and Carlton, he said, yes. Yeah. And he's dead too, he said. Now, the reason they said that, but when we were in, that's what I found out later, the night surgeon come on, I was so badly injured, he said, well, he's dead. I got him, and he said, he's only got about five hours to live, he won't live, he said, he's got head injuries, he's got everything, he says, just keep him comfortable. So the night system, all this, must have thought, well, he's dead, you know, and when the rank got, yeah, right. he said, well, dead. The prince oh, had the echo. Oh. And died overnight, it was like, he was, he did, all past tense, good for the income tax. Oh, oh gee, you I just sent that into the tax. Oh, oh, well, but she knew I was all right, you know, oh. she, she knew. But my mother didn't, and that affected her very much, you know, because she thought I was dead, you know. How long before the record you were okay? I mean, the, before they, you were going to die? Oh. A couple of days, or? Oh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I think a couple of days. What, yeah. was, what was the head injury? Did your... This side of my face, it was all smashed in, and I had head injuries as well, yeah. see, and were, were, Skull injury? Yeah, it was all twisted my face, you had to, you had to straighten my face, you had to straighten my face, yeah. you know, eventually. Then, when they did that, they set it. And I couldn't look at the open the mouth there, because it's set to take the top. Feet of the tubes are in the top. But I had my legs all uh, up and, and oh. tracks as well. I was lucky I was alive, you know, that's what you said, you know. So you come home in 60, 61? Well, I came home in uh, 60 again then. Yeah, that's it. And I was in Britain General for a while then. And then I left the hospital, went home, and I was a bed case at home, and I just had to go in for physiotherapy. Yeah, right. Like but they said it never worked. I had a leg and irons, leg yeah. and huge irons. They said, you'll never play again. You know? you'll, 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 you'll never be able to bend your leg again once you break his femur right here. So you, you can't bend, you know. And yeah. left, you go through great agony yourself, yeah. pulling it back and back, and you'd suffer. And I did, and I did it. But it took me through all the pain, it was terrible. And I used to go down there and go to the zero therapy. You know? How long did it take you there before you Really? Then I started. Then, then, 
it doesn't matter the end. This is not a major thing. No, the end. It was it. Yes. There was a club there, remember it? Yes, yeah. Do you remember where it was? It's a car park. It's a park, car park right? Yes, yes, I remember that. Yeah. Warren McGinsey, remember him? Warren McGinsey, that Take dates a bit with Artie Williams. Alto player? Arty. No, bass player. Artie Williams was Artie. Arty, 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 yeah, Artie, yeah. White oh, like saxophone. Great player, oh, yeah. yeah. He got a knockout. Player. Yeah. Well, he had a band there, as we had thought. Yeah. With St. Lawrence and Lawrence, Brad Scholl, we had Brad Scholl, St. Lawrence, yeah. all that crap in that band. Yeah, yeah Arty was a great yeah. musician. I had about ten wives, didn't he? Lovely fellow, Artie. <laughs> Live the live lives of the full. Oh, yeah, no, he had. He's got my new wife, he's a big cigar. Hello, new lives in his life. Oh, Cecil, Cecil. Looked at the wine list, this is uh, what years this was here, uh, didn't matter what character he was. Yeah, no, that's it. And he really got around yeah. the holiday, the yeah. Sardinia, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. all these birds, and you know, he could lose them all, and he's a very likeable fellow. Yeah, yeah. A bloody good player, yeah, yeah. too. Like a good good player, yeah. you know. Yeah. A complete fly shit, and yeah, he's a yeah. great player. Yeah, yeah. I love the life. Oh, well, he did a lot of work with big bands. I said with the press club here, you know, in, in Wales, yeah. he could get. Oh, I'd work with. Well, yeah. He'd been with some very big bands in London, yeah. Artie, you know. He'd been around, Artie. Yeah. You knew the business, you know. Yeah. Good yeah. player. Yeah. Saxophone, yeah. loved that. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> uh, never treated fools lightly. You no, that's it. You couldn't make him play with Artie, that was it. It was murder. <laughs> I mean, like, I, it was him, that's how I come to come to Cabinet. But let's that. get back to, okay, so, you, okay, we'll move to that. You, 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 you read the, you got off of the gig at about the end or something? Or? Well, you know, I was going to be working, you see. Oh, by the way, in the meantime, I would have forgotten. I joined Granada as a session musician, you see, before that. Before that? When I was at the Olive Park Forum. Years before, right? Oh, yeah, in the first place. Okay, all right, yeah. See, the original then... Hang on, let me write this down. The original, the, the original musical direction of Granada, which yeah. I think Granada started in 55 or so, yeah. I'm not sure, 55, 55. Yeah. Um, it was um, Bob Sharples. Yeah, right. That we used to do all the afternoon. That's Bob. Yeah, I know. Bob Sharples. Yeah, I know. He was the original. He, was, he got the contract. Okay. Because the M.D. for Granada. Then he found he couldn't do everything Sharples, because he was a very busy man, you know. Yeah, right, yeah. And he stepped out, and the guy that took a bass was his piano player, called Derek Hilton. Yeah, Derek Hilton. Hilton. Bloody knockout player, Derek. Yeah. Well, he was Bob Sharp's piano player. So right, So okay. he took over as musical director of Granada. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Then Duffy joined. Bob Duffy. Derek Hilton, yeah. Joined yeah. Derek Hilton. Yeah, right. So, so, so he'd been with the, uh, he'd been with Ray Ellington, and Clash of Rock Duffy, you know. Yeah. He was Ray Ellington, of course. Yeah, he had, he'd had enough. Yeah. And he didn't want to sound anymore, so he got the offer of this uh, Granada. Yeah. A staff musician there with Derek Hilton, and because the next thing is, the original drummer with Derek Hilton was Bob Turner. He used to be the drummer with the MDO. Right. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember him, Bob yeah. Turner? Yeah. Cool, very yeah. Good player, Bob. Yeah. And those days, he was with the MDO. Those days, you couldn't work. The union said you could not work independent television and BBC. Oh right? yes, I remember this. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, now, we yeah, yeah. I remember. Now they have to work one or the other. <laughs> yeah. Right. Bob was with the Lord and Dancer. So yeah. So it was big that up. That's right. So he has to leave Derek. Yeah. So Duffy says to Derek Hilton, I know the fellow that pissed this job and take his place. So Hilton okay. says to Duffy, who is he? So he's in Liverpool, like a red carter, so he didn't know who Derek yeah. is. But does he read sight now? Like, he said, oh, he'll piss this job. Yeah. That. So he said, well, I've got to replace Bob right away because he's just left yeah. immediately. And he said, I've got no time to audition for any law, as Derek says, you know. Yeah. I've got to know who yeah. the are and are they right? And yeah. you're saying he's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Duffy knew me up and said, yeah, what are you doing on Tuesday? And I'm fucking Tuesday. He said, right, he said, you're on Granada live at nine in the morning. I said, what the first program? I said, what? I said, who wins with Derek Hilton with the quartet? Les, uh, Les Beavers was the guitar player. Right, yeah. The reason that he was, I said, Duffy, he said, I said, well, hang on, hang on. I said to him, I said to Duffy, I can't do this. Right, he said, I want him to hear me. I just can't go on there and do this live. He, he writes all the gear, so I can go to the live. I said, what am I about? You know, I mean, all right, it's a lovely job, thank yeah. He said, but you can piss it. You don't think that piss it. I said, no, I think you say that. Come on. Yeah. Delicate has not heard me, you know. Yeah, right, right, right. right. And I, I'd rather you hear me and say, yes or no. It'd be right. easier. Yeah, right. Oh, you haven't got time. Delicate said, fix the zoom, and it's got to be the right one. Yeah. I've no time to hear him. I'll yeah. just rely on Bob Duffy. So I, I didn't want to do it, you see, until he said, oh, for Christ's sake, do me it. What's the matter with you? Oh, experience you, man. You've been doing bloody television said, with the Playboy. And I was sad, you know. And, yeah. He said, for Christ's sake. He said, well, oh, no, I'm sorry. That was afterwards. That was I went back. back. Well, yeah, that was, yeah. I so, so he says to me, so I go. 
see, this morning. I'll never forget it. Well, yeah. And it was new television, so everybody there, because yeah. I don't know what would you play some. Well, they had sound in the other room. They said, you know, Carl was always a gay, so you were sitting over there. You sit there, put your kids on, give you sound check in a minute. And I was looking there, I was sitting, and Bob said, Bob's got a face out of the boat. I said, oh, fucking what are you doing, Bob? Bob. Shit, Bob. Yeah. I said, well, Derek, he's not here. I said, well, I'm probably here, so I don't know how you feel, so. What time are we going out on this? We go out at four o'clock, live. Right. It's live. Right, what are we playing? I don't know. You probably have some written here. Right, he writes it in the morning, brings it in, and says, yeah, one, right. one, one's through, that's yeah. it, yeah. live, four o'clock. Right. Oh, I like shit. I don't know. I, want to, I said, I wonder what all of them Next thing is, there he is, and coming with the series, he's telling you, he's going to face. Yeah. Passes me, because one about, well, yeah, red card. Yeah. Seven foot power. So yeah. I want to talk to you. Listen. He said, you can piss this guy with inside, can you? And what do you say when a fellow says that? Yeah. I said, what? He said, no, I'm asking you a question. Yeah. I've got to be clinical about this. Yeah. Can you can you read sight? You can play? Yeah. Yeah. You're not afraid of television? Yeah. Yeah. I said, I'm doing it. Uh, I, can you do it? If you can't, tell me now, I'll yeah. ring and get somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to get somebody else. Yeah. Bob comes in, you can piss it, I'm sorry. I said, yes, that's what we played. He said, I haven't done it yet, but I'll take the tune. It's called Hunting, I don't think it's Hunting the Hare, he said. I said, that's the tune. He said, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a legend thing. Yeah. Know, a legendary tune, he said. Um, and I'm going to dress it up and go all some different tempos. But I haven't written it yet. Yeah, right. I've been back in about an hour. Yeah, right. But you're all right. But by the time we left, I said, oh, I want to go. I don't get out of it. Hunting, I'm looking, uh, out in the hare, I said. The shield is bump, 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 uh, it was a folk shoot, really. Yeah. And then, dun, 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 but I've had to go through it, so we will go through it, you know, I've yeah. gone through that. Yeah. But not only a couple of times, that's it, you know. Yeah. So we went through it anyway. And I, I was hitting myself, oh dear, yeah. and I fucked this up. So what's people's temples? We should change the temples. Watch me, I'll die for you, know, he says. It was very nice to yeah. you know. And we did it, you see. Yeah. I went through it. I come to the end and I'm like, bang. And I thought, this is about this, freaking 64 pounds, always. That's it. We all stood there silence and he said, You could have the job for as long as you want. <laughs> really? That's what he said? Yeah. Oh, it was great. You oh, can, he's right. You can, please. And you play well. He said, yeah. You uh, can. I said, oh, I didn't know. You know. I said, yeah. no, I said, yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. How do you know? It's not yes. a whole country. Play. Wonderful. He says, is that your right now? I said, yeah. So you were the staff I'm a bit of, Yeah, I said, I'm a bit afraid at four o'clock when we're going out. So we all are. You have to get over that, you know. So, how did you fit that in with everything else? I'm well, sorry, I'm asking questions. No, I yes, I don't no, remember what you That's why you were Paul Lawn then in the ballroom. Yes, right. And we used to record in the daytime, you see. So, you did the Granada thing in the daytime? That's right. And we, uh, we, did, we were, were afternoon programs, maybe, four o'clock in the afternoon. Right. Like that, so and if something came up overnight, night, what did you do? Well, I could put depths in for Paul. Paul let me put depths in. Who? I can just, for instance, can you give me a Liverpool drummer in the depth? Oh, I don't know. I can't think. Who At that time, who was it about? I can't think so that came in for me. Jeff Van Dyke, I've forgotten that. Was Dave Joseph about there? No, Dave wasn't there. No, 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 Dave wasn't, no. Mm. It was, uh, we were still there. Dave would be there then. But mainly I did it, mainly I did yeah. it. Only now and again I did it. Mainly I, did. I could yeah. get back in time, you know. Oh, I could okay. get back in time. Because we used to come back right away, yeah. so we finished recording. What about when you were with the Playboys and you were on the road? Well, I wasn't with the Playboys then. When you were? When did you leave Granada then? 
Well, I was, no, I'm just saying, what I missed out is I was a Granada when I was in working with Paul Vaughan. Oh, right, OK. So, but when, now, when I left, yeah, well, what happened then? So when Paul the reason joined I left, the Playboys, uh, you had to be through the Granada gig up as well? Well, yeah, because, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, I got, why, why, why it was, it was very, very good at first, Granada, I think, after three or four a week, you know. Right, yeah. But it was getting less, that. Yes. It was great at first. The money was great. We were all full. I was, I was in things like People and Places at six o'clock. Yeah, you know, right, right, yeah. Uh, with Bill, Bill Brundy and all that. Yeah, and you a guy after that, Dave, uh, David Marler. Do you remember Was him? he a director? He, no, he was an announcer. He had a very Shakespearean voice. But he did what the papers say for years. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, I did People and Places, see the 6.30 and things yeah. like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, they were on that, yeah, he was right. I did, uh, what was the original? It was Bill Brundy and Jay Byrne. Oh, yeah, I remember them. Well, yeah. I did them. Yeah, yeah, I remember them. Yeah. I did all those. So go on. Well, we were doing about four a week. Yeah, we yeah right. Really, actually. And I was still going back and working with them all the night. Yeah, right. But they were getting less. Right. Um, Delix is oh, it's one of those things, the programmes are getting less. Uh, yeah. Then I did a thing called, um, oh, oh, what was that? I used to do other things. Oh, then I did the Russ Conway show every, every week. Right. Russ right. Conway. Um, yeah, yeah. It was called At Your Request. He used to do 15 minutes twice a week. Uh, right. I mean, I can't understand the whole thing with the truck. Because Delix is going to do the, um, you and Bob did it with me as well. Oh, we, did, we did the Russ Conway show. I can remember all the other. That they were about fifteen minutes every week. There. Just, oh, twice did you say? Pardon? Twice a week? Yeah, they were twice a week. Those comments. They called the last shows, they were. Yeah, I remember. Um, we used to work with Russ. Then. That's right. Yeah. But well, we used to work with him a lot. But we, of course, with Russ, you see, he used to come to music. He used to say to us, "Look, I'm, I'm not a reader. I'm like, you just come in the green room. We get a cigarette packet, write the tempo down on tunes. Yeah, right. Like right. And keep it very, very simple. You know, yeah. Ross had that was simple player. Yeah, right. Not any clever, no clever yeah. something, no. He just no, played. right. Well, he was an entertaining piano player, so wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he was a bit better than that. Well, I know you know what you mean. Type thing, you know. I know you mean. You know, the old problem. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just like piano, yeah, yeah. in his own way. But he couldn't read any. Yeah. It was just out of his well, head. Uh, by the way, just a diversion. Joe Piano Anderson, was he any well, but it, no, Joe Piano Anderson, he was in the kids' band with me in, uh, when I was a kid. I joined the kids' band in London, which I forgot about. What was the what, what's the quick then, kids? Well, oh, that, that, that was a junior orchestra in London. Hang right? on, kids. Right. Joe Anderson was in that band. It's been in London, wasn't it? Yeah. When did you go to London? To the junior, when I was a kid. Uh, how old were you, about 14, when I first went to London. I was going down to school in London for a while. I was attending junior orchestras there. And he was in London, junior orchestra. Well, how did you get there? Uh, Teddy Joyce, the band leader. I came to Liverpool, this band, this big band, you know, it was a big band, and uh, I, went, I went along with my father in Winter Lab, and he was auditioning for youngsters for junior bands in London, and I went and did an audition, and the next thing he sent for me, and I went to London. So, so you went, when did you come back? Well, I stayed there for quite a while in London with all the junior bands. Two years, couple of years? Oh yeah, a couple of years, I had all the junior bands, yeah. Joe Henderson was in that band. Yeah, he's a good player. Paggy, we used to call him Paggy. He seemed to be a much better player than the others. Oh, he was, yeah. A good player. Yeah. He, he was a... I saw him recently. Well, he's dead now, you know. He died in his 60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I saw a video of him recently. He's, and I thought, uh, he was a music publisher in the end. Was he? Oh, yeah. After the war. He was, what's his name? He was also, I thought he was going to marry him. What's his name? I thought that's how I was going to marry him. Because he was with her. He was a copyist, the singer. Yes. Fez. Man the French fella. Yeah. Oh, Christ. Pat? Um, no, 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 two o'clock. Of course, of course, yes. Yes, of course, I can remember, yes. He was a piano player. I forgot all about that. Yeah, I thought he was going to marry him, actually. He was very close to that. But he didn't in the end. But uh, he was a music publisher. He's always in London, you know. It's okay, so we've got, so, where are we? Uh, melody in, you're playing that, we've yeah. got the, the yeah. so, and, so who got you back playing in the Melody in? Walter McGinty. Walter McGinty, that's it, yeah. Walter, yeah, he was, uh, Walter was the great bass player, he used to work around with local bands and that, you know, yeah, and yeah. he got this off of the Melody with the quartet, I said, well, I can't do it, Walter. I'm quartet? Just, I've got my legs in bloody irons, yeah. like, you know, yeah. for Christ's sake, yeah. I can't play drums anymore, and, uh, oh, incidentally, also, while I had my legs in mind, I both started playing again. Hilton rang me. Yeah. Daddy Hilton. And uh, he didn't even write this sounds to me. He no, said to me, What are you doing next Thursday? I saw him, I'm afraid of Friday. He said to him, I said, Why? He says, Come up and do a show with me. I said, I can't do it, Daddy, for Christ's sake. I've got my legs in irons. 
Legs. Yeah, with legs. With my legs. With one leg. Yeah, I was in the lions. Yeah, know. okay. One leg in. I can't sit down. I can't right. play with right. I can't play with kids. You're right. So he said, well, I don't want you to play with kids. I know this. I've heard about it. He said, I want you to come. I want to help you out. He said, come and do some live shows with me. And I said, do a couple of me. I said, well, what am I going to do? He said, no problem. He said, bring the snares with you. Stand up. And I get the cameras to shoot you from waist upwards, not downwards. And people wanted Did this. you do it? And he was playing. Oh, I said, a bit naughty, that is. Not really. No. We said, the show us. He said, but the show, you only go there. And you're standing up playing on. Just play with brushes, man, you know. Because he's not used to kids. And it's good enough for me. He says, I like to play anyway. Yeah. And he said, you've put food Did you do so, it? Yeah. Oh, so oh that's a that. fabulous story. That. And he said, just come play. I'm, I'm just playing with the uh, standing up drums. He said, I've got to shoot you from the waist up. And he said, they won't know you're not on a kiss because you're playing with the standing It's only brush work. You'd be playing anyway. He said, maybe just, just play around. Well, smile. you could do you could play smile. brushes then, Red. Yeah. Just and smile, and play brushes. And he said, I'll do my students. And he said, great, I'd like to have you on the show. Stephen's playing brushes now. Because I remember Bill's room just said, oh, I've got to Bill. Do you remember Bill? Yeah. Oh, I thought I did. Intellectually, was you? Oh, yeah, very, yeah. Sarcastic. Oh, yeah. Sarcastic, was you know. Yeah, good in. TV. Oh, yeah, really. but when I walked in with my name, oh, you sat there. I always remember, you were brushing, don't put this down no, no. in the dark passage. Oh, right, there we are. We've got Mr. Carter here, who's broken all his legs. Everybody say, ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, fuck it <laughs> off. So, you know, he said, ah. Right. Uh, Taking a busy one, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I did that. I, I did not I, I did a couple to stand up with Dennis, you know, because you know, that's fine for me, so that's fine. But he said, because, um, he said, you know, I just thought I'd help you. Because like, he saw he, he saw you in the Playboys, then, because he thought the act was great. Oh, yeah. I went to Manchester, the Manchester Theatre, what was it, Palace Manchester, what yeah. was And then I came in to say it, they come back, he said, that's not that palace. He said, you've got a great quartet, right? that play. No, 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 no wonder you left there and went to London, and right? he said, not kind of quartet, right? exactly. entertainment-wise. Yeah. Well, of course, you're well played, and yeah, yeah. yeah. proper. Said, I really enjoyed it, you know, and he said, uh, he said, plot surrenders. So, the, I, I got, Walter McGinty, yeah, well, he said, had a quartet. Well, yeah, we had a quartet. So, what was it? You know what you used to do with the Blame Boys? I said, yeah, can you emulate like that here at the end of the year? Well, yeah. You know? Yeah. So, I said, well, you're not to rehearse. I said, it's, it's a matter of, uh, you know, they were very bloody good players and singers, they were, you know, yeah. and you have to read to kind of do the same gear as that. Well, he said, in that vein, you know. Yeah, right, so. What else was the back? Who was it? Well, we had. When Walter, when Vinnie Newton was on piano for oh, right. a few teams, and Joe Royal did a bit there. Remember Joe yeah. Royal? Joe his dad. Joe Royal used to go to Banya. Joe Royal, his dad, another footballer, was the, you know, the manager, Joe Royal. Yeah, right? yeah. But yeah. his dad was a piano player, you know. Didn't know that. Oh, Joe Royal's a piano player. He was well known, but uh, piano player, Joe. Club, so you've got Joe Rowan or Vinnie Newton. Yeah, you've and, uh, got Walter McGinty. And Teddy used to play with there too. Also Lance Windsor, you remember him? Lance Windsor. The singer, the colour fan. Yeah. Lance where the hit on off and Judy Nash was a singer, you remember him? Yeah. He played piano. Yeah. He sang. Yeah. Sang yeah. like yeah. Cole. Yeah. He worked a bit with us there. We changed piano players, you see. Yeah, right. Uh, well, I'm, I've had a call Jimmy Douglas on something. Jimmy Douglas? Lives in Wallace, you know. He doesn't play anymore, man, Jimmy. So, play it's it's court, so you've got a court set, yeah. And we only did that for a few weeks. Um, after, no, we didn't have gone a while at the end of the year now. I, mean, I, I can't think of anything. What year would this be in Paris? We're talking about 60, no, after that would be. Um, yeah, probably 61, 62. 61 ish. Yeah. It doesn't matter. 61 ish, yeah. Uh, uh, and um, we were there, we were happy. There was a good little job there. We used to do it four nights a week there. We did a very good business, you know. Yeah, right. I was just playing stand up drums, though. I couldn't sit down. I used to just stand up and play and sing. Right. And so, because I had this leg problem, you see. Was you, you were still working on the leg? Oh, yeah. I was yeah, still doing physical therapy, and I still yeah. had the iron on it, and okay. I couldn't, uh, couldn't do it. So, I, I, it did me good, but it got me playing again, actually, the other day, because I never thought I'd play again. I was mentioning yeah. this sort of anyway. Yeah, right, you would be, yeah. And it got me that play again, I'll say that it did, you know. Yeah, right. Got me interested in the business again, you know. Right. Um, and then I, we stayed there for a while, I don't know what happened then. I, I, got, a, I got an offer to, uh, you know, you move around. My leg was getting all right then, I was beginning yeah. to bend it and have to die and take me off and I just start playing the kiss again then. I yeah, oh, good. Kissing again, I start playing the kiss again because I'd do that. And I got an offer from the Bears Paul. There used to be a wrestling to do for the Bears Paul. Yeah, the Bears Paul by, by the young... It's in Church yeah. Street. Uh, I don't think it's there now. Bears Paul? It was a very famous wrestling then. Wasn't it by the top? No, no, no. No, no it's in uh, Lord Street. Yeah, I know the Bears Paul. Yeah. Just down a bit from St James, uh, 
James was saying, yeah, okay, so you, yeah, damn lawsuit. Yeah, it was yeah, on the yeah, left yeah, there. Yeah. It was a restaurant, and there was really yeah. years ago. My sister used to go. She was six years older. The Strawsy place. Well, you yeah. used to have dinner there, dinner dancing, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Went there in a while because uh, I just like fancy the job, you know. And um, playing drums. Oh yeah, with the quartet. Well, they came with me. Oh, that's right. Well, yeah. You were in the quartet from the Birds. Took the quartet from yeah. there to the Birds Ball in Liverpool. Yeah. This is early sixties. That's right. And then yeah. uh, you said you remember the cabin as well from around this time. Oh, the cabin. Oh no, that the cabin was nineteen. Well, I was at the Albert Park Ball, and that was. Yeah. That was the Albert Park Ball. And you used to go down there. I used to play there. You used to play there. Yeah. yeah. I played with Earl Hines down there. Really? Yeah. Now he came over with them, um, and I remember, I'll tell you who was with See, him. Alan Sittler owned this. I'll tell you who was with Earl, Earl, Earl Hines. It was Bud. Bob Brookmeyer was over there. Bob, it was Bud Johnson. And, uh, it was Bud Johnson and Earl Warren. Well, they, I, I saw so them on the, there was a, but, Did they play the, um, the fill? Probably. I mean, but you I mean, see, let me tell the story yeah, how it comes to be there. We were in the Arnold Park Ballroom. Right. That was going back to that again, you know, yeah. I was doing some reason. And sitting there. Yeah. Now Sittler found the cabin and, and called it the cabin. Yeah. He used to go to, to Palace a lot. Yeah, he, he told me this, I remember this, I made the night. Called the cave. Yeah. Well, it was an uh, emulator here, you know, and he, and he took us down. One, one day he said to Branscombe and I, because he was really having a lot of Branscombe. Yeah. Come on, what do you think of this? One Sunday and we went down and had a look at this place and it was, I'm going to do with this for cellar. I said, well, open up as a jazz fund. And he said, uh, I'm going to call it the cabin. So he said, well, I got it. He said, well, I'm going to sessions here, and modern jazz here, and everything. You know, and we used to play down there. We, a lot of us used to play. We used to do afternoon sessions there, lunchtime sessions from 12 to 2 wow. for the workers, you know. Yeah, right. They were two, and we did a lot there then. We had all kinds of people. We had yeah, the Grand Storm itself, all kinds of people. Wow. Kenny Gray. Yeah, Ron, Ron, Ron Kennedy, Kennedy Ron. was this. Oh, yeah, it was great. It was a great jazz club there. And they got a lot of stars there, because it was mad about jazz. Yeah. Man. Didn't play himself? No. It's loaded though, as far as the doctor's son. Right. He's a millionaire now. Just, Is he? Oh, Christ, I've seen him, I've seen him last few years since. Uh -huh. He sold it for nothing when skid, you know. Yeah. He sold oh. it to his accountant, McClaw. Yeah, that's right. He yeah. was the guy that made it. I couldn't run a fucking piss up with right. a dick out. Right, but Alan yeah. found it, discovered it. Then right. he went skid there, you see. He came to Bangin a couple of times when he put some decent jam on. He came to Bangin. He was a very nice guy, yeah. I've seen Alan a few years now. He's a million earlier. I know the name. Yeah. A bit bombed now. Yeah. I just skipped it after they went to London. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. another story. I can tell you this lovely story about him as well. Anyway, well, another story. But I'm still going. So you, so you will be playing early. So okay, you, you moved to the Bears Club. We've got that in, okay? Um, yeah. The, 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 when you're talking about the cabin, though, that was showing the Hollow Park. Yeah, that was in the fifties. Yeah, yeah, that 50s. was. Yeah, and Dan, why he rang was what, the Hollow Park Ballroom one. Yeah. While we were playing, yeah. Alan said that. So, so Branscombe, he got, got on the phone, he said, oh, I've got this one talking to you. Yeah, he asked you down to have a look. To Come see down at midnight, I've got some friends here, you might like here to play. I'm going to stay here all night, I've got champagne flowing, chickens, and so all night, we're open all night. I said, who's down there? He's coming to you. Come on, come down and see. You'll love it. Yeah. So Branscombe will get my car, we're all down, they're not hell of a lot of us. Johnny Ellis was there, I'll get down. I couldn't believe it. I walked down the steps at midnight, it was. Yeah. It was going up there. We're down there, and there is Earl Hines playing, Bob Brookmar, and Bob Oh, Hall, lovely player. Yeah. He's down there. Yeah. Um, the little, all the hungry little little band are down there. Oh, and yeah. Looking stage, doing things, all playing. And on, on the drums was a very, very famous drummer, I'm getting very old now, um, called George Wettling. Yeah, Wettling, yeah, yeah, he was with. Um, oh, very uh, old he was, was then. Wasn't he? Was that Louis? For the time. So like that, he was very famous, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Dixie Lamp, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. Big fat fella. But yeah. well, I got him, he was so pissed. Yeah. He saw the play and got pissed because it was upset and it was long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we were all listening and I was all getting around and going on the ones. And then the next thing, he wet him, fell off the hood and kicked completely on. I mean, sitters as you may get on. You know. So as you may get on. Oh, I said, look, let's get on there. So I get on. And I'm now playing with the yeah. airlines and fucking Bob Brookman. Oh, no. Oh, no. So oh, no. Oh, and I loved it, you know. Oh, I went to the top. We were there, and now they're playing the road and playing, you know. <laughs> this was a you mentioned song. the Basie band as well, didn't you? Um, I, I'll get that bass, I know. Not the Basie band, no. You said you had the Basie band that was. You had Johnny Hodges down there. Oh, yeah. Band. yeah, lovely. 
I didn't pay with them, but no, I'm talking about that. But you say sitting and had all these people. Oh, down we had all them. these people. We had stars down there. Didn't we? Yeah, that nobody knew about. But no, we, you know, we used to score down. He had a great first time. Yeah, everybody had a Manchester. club. He had a club, didn't he? So he, he, was, in, he was in Manchester. He'd go up to the and he'd go and see the show and he'd go backstage and introduce himself to a lot of men. And say, come to my club, I'm And say, come down at midnight, what are you doing on Wednesday night? You've got a night off, come down in champagne, put you up in the Adelphi, mm -hmm. and pay all, you pay for them. Okay, you man. just pay them, they give them a wonderful night out as well, and play for me, you know. Because he loves the artists, you see. Yeah. Alan right. used to say to us, it's unbelievable, we did a lot of sound sessions for him in the early days, you yes. know, the jazz sessions, yeah. you know. And we got from 12 to 2. Yes. The, at 2 o'clock, all the people left because they went back to the office, they yeah. to work us, and yeah. empty. And then we'd go across to the grapes. Yeah. <coughs> in Matthews. Yeah, I know, yeah. Then we're in the grapes and sit and say, How do you all feel like playing for another hour? And we'd say, When? He'd say, In about half an hour. Well, back in the, the club, he said, Yeah. I said, well, Who's going to be there? He says, Only me. I said, Only you? She said, Yeah, I just like to hear you play. So you're going to play to me for an hour, is that right? Wow. So you're going to pay us? Oh, I can never pay you. Don't worry yeah. about that. You're paid full back. Yeah. But I'm just going to sit there and play for me. I know, he's just got that palace at the front and say, like, play. We played the house for him, clap, it's great. Played the ball, do another few of us like that. It was all money to him. I know that feeling. Okay. I know that feeling. Give me a few quiddings. Yeah, say. I know that feeling. Yeah. And it was wonderful, well, that one. Oh, yeah. I loved him, you know. Yeah. I bet you did, yeah. You know, he, was, he loved jazz and he yeah. knew about jazz. Yeah. He knows everybody and he knows about jazz. Yeah. And Tommy Smith, all that crowd used to come down. Oh, they're yeah. all down there, Tommy Smith. Yeah. Elder, yeah. all of us down there. We used to play the old day. We were always down there. We used to, live there. We used to, go, we used to go from the old park down to there and stay all night. We often did that. Wow. We'd play all night for him, you know, they used to pay us. Yeah. And they used to have great musicians. Yeah, the little band used to be. The old Tubby and everybody, didn't he? Had all kinds of. Then it, one night he said to us, um, I'm, um, I'm not in a pop with Mum and Dad are away. He used to live in Mother Abbey, you know. They had mm. a beautiful big house there. Mm. Dad was just a, a, a doctor, you know. Yeah. Loved as he was. Yeah. And then away, he said, and uh, I've got another in the house. I was really young, I think. So you know, you know, and he always had the latest. Uh, well, the first one I ever saw was the, the new Jack. The yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. Well, the XK Sunday. Yeah. yeah. And I had one. Yeah, so. Yeah. Speed round up, pissed out his mind. And yeah. And I went in a big party in my house. He said, no one ever wanted to come. Yeah. Well, it's going to go all night. I've got waitresses there, I've booked them, and they're going to serve you breakfast in the morning. Right. And I said, you're all going to play, and the whole three little little band are coming. They're staying all night with me. And they'll have an eat, she ought to do that. So we all went and we were there all night. We took turns to play. And then we were Tony Cole, all the crowd, all the night. Oh, great. Sister Rosetta Sharp was there. Yeah, oh, yeah, I remember her. From was, she, was, she was a mess as well. She was a really was she all way, yeah. And then Tony Cole just got married then. He just, just got married and he was in there. We were all playing all night there, playing away. And Alan was just getting pissed and we were asleep. And in the morning we had breakfast, egg, bags, and bacon. All these races in, in gear, you know, serving your breakfast in his house, this was. And so, okay, um, we've got you over in Liverpool now, Bears Pool. Well, right, now while I'm in the Bears Pool, Hall, yeah. Artie Williams used to come in before. Artie was the band leader at the Cabaret Club. Now, do you know, when, when, when did that start? When did the Cabaret Club start? I think it's, I think the Cabaret yeah, Club yes. started, I think it started in the, I'd say, 1950. Fifty nine, sixty. Yeah, because one panic told me that it was fifty nine, sixty. I think the guy from uh, Jack Murphy Neil, was the governor. Yeah, but Neil from the sink. Neil, he had shoe shoe place in both six. Neil, oh, I can't remember his name. He opened a coffee bar in the front end. I don't know. He that. was the, apparently the first guy to have I don't it. Know that. So uh, Kelly, that's right. There've been a few bands bands in there and musicians in there before I went. Arty had the job. Okay. So Arty had the job in, oh, yeah. in, in the ca in the cabaret club. Great player, Arty. Okay. Good oh, for yeah. him. His personality was a comp. Uh, oh yes, yes, I know. Yeah, my yeah. host he was, everything you know. So did you move in there with him or? No. Well, what happened? You see, because I'd, I'd worked with Arty on and off. Yeah, pieces yeah. Pieces. You must have worked with all these people. Yeah, all the little bits and pieces. Yeah. Because he had a trio in there, and a very good trio. He had, he had uh, a wonderful piano player called Johnny Roberts, knockout from yeah. London. Oh, Johnny was a brilliant, brilliant yeah. player. Really. What a player he was, Johnny was a great yeah. player. From London, you know, he had a lot of Because Arsene used to work, well, he wouldn't work with any idiots, Arsene, yeah, yeah, yeah. any character he was. Yeah. And they had uh, Tommy Smith was with him. Yes. Playing bass. Yes, I know. Sean. Yeah, I know that. And Trump and everything, Smithy. 
I'm a very good sort from London, you see. Yeah. I, I'd gone in there one night, did I? Who was it? You know? I can't remember his name or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he was a good player. Yeah, okay. It's one of them. I, and then when he comes to the best part, I said to him, Oh, wow, and he come and he said, Just he heard the quartet in there. He said, You really knew what's going to Yeah. He says, Fucking knock out you, that quartet is right there. He said, You're entertaining, that. He said, That's what you want. But it's a Catholic club, because we've got a big one. Yeah. I said, You've got a good job. Yeah. We said, The government buy, bought me a beautiful car and everything, and he did. But yeah. the car for nothing, he got a hearty ride around, and three cars and everything, you know. Yeah. I loved the arts, he could have been my host, you know, yeah. and uh, he said, uh, on to us, yeah, he coming in another line, he said, and he didn't get it, so he's go, uh, he's going over there now, because we'd be playing there at 8 o'clock, and he didn't start at about 9 or 10 o'clock, yeah, right. Night, yeah. Yeah. and he came in, he was just, he said, I've got a proposition for you, I said, what, he said, come and join me, I want you to come and with me, he said, me, he said, yeah, I said, you've got a very good drum in there, I said, oh, fuck him, I'll get in the room. Instead of last, he's ruthless, he was, you know. Yeah, yeah. I said, don't do that. Yeah. He said, I want you with me. I said, what do you want me? He said, I just want you with me. Yeah. You're the guy, I want. Same chap. Yeah. That's what I'm entertaining. I said, you know. Yeah. From doing the cabaret, piss the cabaret, you relieve everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. I said, I've got to give all this up then. This is a fucking big deal. He wanted money to get me. And I got in trouble over there, yeah. yeah. He said, they must understand this fella, say, it's a business we have to do. Yeah, yeah. He said, oh, I said, I don't like this new second as well. Yeah. And I feel guilty. I always do feel guilty. Yeah, I don't like doing these yeah, things. Yeah, I know, I know. It's a, it, I, I hate that. Yeah, right. We roll and fell around. I've yeah. never liked it in my life. Yeah, yeah. They wanted to do it to me. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that. Because he's a very good player, that boy. I love him. And yeah. there's no reason why he should fight him. And he's, if he was a fucking normal player, I'd think, well, yeah, but he's yeah. not. He's, he's yeah. a great player. He's a black man. He's a black man. He's a black man. I said, I can't do this. Like, no, I don't think about it. No, I'd leave it alone. You know. So I said, don't forget it for now. I said, yeah, I'm all right, yeah, you're right there. Yeah. Anyway, about three weeks later, I come back and he says, you'll have to join me. He says, why, well, I'm just fucking fired and so on. Oh, yeah, you're totally pissed off. I couldn't get on with him anyway. He says, fine. Yeah. I said, is this a joke? He says, no, I have fired him. And if you don't have it, somebody else is going to come in. I said, it's a choice, you know. Yeah, right. He won't be there, that's all right. Because he can't. Yeah. I told him, I can get back up, fuck off. Yeah, yeah. It's a little fellow. He said, I said, good drummer. He said, yeah, that's so all. I didn't get on with him. Didn't want him, man. Yeah. Sorry. Never did. He said, you know. Yeah. I couldn't join him. Yeah. So I was chatting the boys about it one. He said, no, you do it because uh, it's the way you got You're a professional. Well, they were a professional. You see, the semi pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're a pro. You've got to go where you work. So I joined Archie, you see. Right. There with Smithy and him. And then. Uh, Who's piano? Johnny Roberts. Johnny Roberts, that's right, yeah. Of course, yeah. Man, I'm all pissed off. Johnny Roberts, I'm yeah. It's because I don't know the name, you see. Oh, Johnny, unbelievable yeah. player, Johnny yeah. Roberts. But, um, fortunately, I've okay. you know, Johnny, he was funny, Johnny, he used to get the accent. We used to do the band call uh, in Town Club. He always had a big name, you know. There, yeah, I know, yeah. Big yeah. name, you know. Yeah. Well, Matt Monroe's right yeah. now. It couldn't be anybody. Yeah. Uh, he used to go and the you know, first of the same yeah. way when he came in for the band call in the afternoon. Mm. Piano player, so Johnny Roberts. Some of them knew him, yeah. really. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And uh, Johnny, and he's a big fly shit, Johnny. Yeah. Beautiful players, so yeah. yeah. Stick them up, whatever. So I'll tell you. Oh, there you go. Next. And you fucking kid. Uh, yeah. Lucid old, you fucking love you. Know. Yeah. That was that then. They weren't on till one o'clock. Oh, uh, so you were on the top. Right. By one o'clock, the fucking part was upside down, so we could be not there. What is this? Ah! I said, you're talking to him. You want to do this? I said, you're pissed now. Oh, don't worry about it. You're all right. It's lovely, Johnny. I loved him. Well, he, he did that all the time. Well, so was the time, you know. Yeah. Fucking crazy. But he was a character, you see. Yeah. And Archie was a character. Yeah. And you had two characters together, like, and because uh, Arnie was a man there, and the two of them, you know, so funny. He had him thrown out the club one night, Arnie, on an Irish night. I'll never forget this. Come and Arnie went into the, and the Arnie goes to town, that was Irish night, like, yeah. March, and the place is packed, all good. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Arnie's got his sham rocket, yeah. 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 right? So I said, Johnny, that's had a few things, that's in the car. So my job is to start, man, we've got a bit of the music, so then it's Irish night, a few hours shoes. And he says, I'm not playing in the Irish films. Fuck, you can't stand that kind of music. Bollock, I'm not playing. 
And I said, what do you mean you're not playing? He said, I assume, you know. You know, they said, oh, fuck that. He said, no, no, I'm not playing in the attitudes. He said, the place is fucking packed. We've got to see, oh, we've got to play. What do you mean you're not going to play in the attitudes, you know? You know, just if you just play that crap, I'm not playing it, he said. Because Charlie was, he was funny about that. He said, I'm not playing, it's fucking rubbish. He said, I'm playing it, you know. Yeah. Oh, he said, really? Okay. Just sit there, sit down for this. Goes down the door and says to the bouncers, could you come and throw my fucking piano player out the club and don't let him in again. Right. And the bouncer said, Oh, John, he said, Yeah. Well, he said, Throw him out now. I want him thrown out the club now. So the bouncer's come up. And I said, well, Get him up to the piano and just fucking march him out. Throw him out the club. And I'm sitting there, and there's only Artie and I there and the bass player. And no piano player. And I said, We can't do this. I said, Why? I said, We've got no piano player. And you're only playing clarinet. <laughs> What's going to happen in the meantime? Drummer and bass player. And I said, I'm worried about him. I'm his eyes are smart. He can't play on the He can stop playing. He's fucking not need him. You need to tell him what I'm going to do. And in the meantime, he's outside. He's trying to get in. He's just fucking keep him out there. He kept him out there. He's got a reason it was. The, the bouncing of what was a night. Oh, to you. This fellow down in the door, down, he's freezing out there. And he doesn't want to go home. And he, he said, he wants to come. And he said, okay, we stayed out there. So anyway, she let him in. Let him in. Do you want to play hard? Oh, she said, no, no, no. I've got all right, all right. <laughs> brilliant. Son of a fellow. That's one. brilliant. No, 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 no. These things don't happen now. Hey? These things well, don't happen. Well, he noticed yours. He didn't teach for lightly. And then another time was, he, Johnny was half ill one night. Yeah. And he couldn't just do it. He was genuinely ill. Yeah. And I come in and I said to Artie, where's Johnny? He said, he won't be in. He said, he is ill. I, I said, what am I going to do? He said, I've got a debt coming in. I said, who is it? Uh, he said, I don't know him really, but I, I've been told. He's a nice yeah, player. Yeah. I've got to get over so I said, got yeah. a lot of work to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the next thing, this fellow, and I don't remember this fellow's name, I can't think of the life of me now. He comes in with a whole pile of music on his arm, you see, and walks in, whatever his name was, and I said, of you, it's on the piano player. Oh, I, oh, are you? I'm not too good. Uh, he said, so, he gets on the pitch, the piano, and said, yeah, and he said, what's that one of your arms? He said, it's from music. And I said, what? Your music? Isn't that all I have to music on the play? Yes, he said, on the part. So, music for what? He says, play it tonight, he says. He says, give him a sort of... So he gives him the arse, he asks him, he's got a furball, what the fuck are you doing? He says, he's like, what are you doing? He's like, what are you doing? He says, what are you doing? Oh, dear. Oh, well, I said, what? He said, tell her that idea. Oh, that's your Jack Cavalier's fault. Then you start reading the fucking one tell her that box. He said, what? Oh, my God. The fellow was really upset. He didn't leave. And I said, no, I said, oh, forget it, you know. Anyway, the fellow played, and he wasn't all that clever. You know, I knew it. He said, what do you play? I knew this. That's what he got all old parts. I guess I played music. He right. said, I've got no ear, you know. He said, this is arty, you know. Okay, when did it change? Well, I mean, really, well, well, I, I always associate the cabaret with. Well, I don't think Vinnie Newton was there for a bit. Vinnie Newton, oh yeah, ever, yeah. But uh, does Daniel ever do it? No, well, uh, he came in a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. I said you did do it. Do you remember called Tommy Steer? Oh yes, Tommy. Tommy Steer said, I went to see a few years ago. I went to see the Rich Band at uh, Stockport. Yeah. And I was in the, in the front of the theatre at Stockport. They had the bar. They had a bar yeah. at the show. And who's in there? But uh, Sid Lawrence, who I know Sid very well, because yeah. he used to be with I was going out the club. Yeah. So he said, It's like, How are you? Come on, sit with me. So I'm short to Sid, you see. And uh, we'd seen the first half of the shot and then he said, I'm going to see the Lichtman. So, so Sid said, That's what I'm here for, see yeah. the Lichtman. He said, I'll meet you in the interval again. Right. So in the interval, we'll come out, and we're back at the bar again, and now Sid's with me. He said, uh, And there's a uh, some of the musicians with me, and I'm chatting where I'm drinking, and I'm getting slowly pissed. I'm yeah. not driving, it's yeah. finished with me now. Yeah. And he's getting pissed, not us. Yeah. Neither of them went back on the second half with that piss, actually. Yeah. But in the meantime, Tommy Steele and I, you see, yeah, right. walks in with us, said, Red, he said to, he said to, uh, look at Sir Nolly, he said, see him, Red, he's the only fucking man that's fucking fired me. Fired me, this bastard. <laughs> Didn't you? And I said, yeah. And Lord said, you fired him? I said, yeah. I said, why well, couldn't fucking play? That's why. He said, what do you mean, good fucking play? You couldn't fucking play. I fired him. He's a bit heavy handed, Tommy, wasn't he? So, no, wasn't that? He was originally a fiddle player, you know. 
Oh, sorry. I was thinking of Tommy Bogan then. Sorry, Tommy Steer. Yeah, no, oh, Tommy Steer. Boss player. Oh, right. Oh, the hell, man. Oh, oh, Christ. But he was at the Empire on fiddle. That's right, right, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He yeah. loved a bit of piano, but uh, yeah. only yeah. a bit at the time. Yeah. Only a bit of piano. Yeah. I'm he sorry. ended up on uh, that, that was oh. days, wasn't it? Oh, he's on, 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 he's on,
Charlie Brown and Brown was just, well, I think we learned it, wasn't it? So I wonder why my problem is going on with these. She's looking for you there, she's saying all this. Yeah. Oh, I start to watch it. Oh, she's looking for you. Job, 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 job. You're not good. What's it on the back? You're it. You're on it. I, I have it, you know. Thanks very much, you've done me very fairly, you know, I said, but you know it right, don't worry. So then I had Tommy Smith with me then. That's right, yeah. So Tommy yeah. said, well, I don't worry about you. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. settled. Remember Tommy Smith? So, so the, the trio was Tommy Smith, yeah. was a lovely player. So oh, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gorgeous, yeah. resisting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Till I piano myself. Yeah, yeah, right. Artie goes off with well, that. Well, what year was this? Ooh, now when would Artie book it off about? 63, so yeah, he okay. put it off with this okay. bird. Because okay. the thing is, what happened with Artie was uh, the, the last we saw of Teddy Bennett Rod was she was being escorted from live sensation by detectives. Look at that, comfortable. Really? <laughs> she used to rob jewelries, rob jewelry stores. That's when you got a money. Oh, right. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. You can't put that no, in. No, I'm not going to have a go at you, no, of course. This is another story, though. Oh, I'll put that Artie left, um, oh, Artie left and gave you the job one night. Yeah, that he sorry, yeah, yeah. So you've got it, this is 63, so... So I've got that now, I'm 60, I've got the band lead, now I'm the band lead, you see. You're right. So I'm calling the tune now, you see. You're right. That was great. It's yeah. Really, lovely, and really yeah. great business and everything. Yeah. And, uh, the next thing, we used to have a... It's, it's so involved, this, you know. Uh, we had a, a double act called the Sonic Sisters, they were singers, they were very attractive. Yeah. And Till used to never laugh Till, he was a miserable bastard, yeah. a good piano player though. Yeah. And he used to fancy one of the bird singers there. And he was every now and again, they'd come in cabaret there. Oh, right, yeah. The Sonic Sisters, I can't remember that. And the little one, and the little one used to fancy me originally, and she used to sit to me one time. She was there with us for the week, you see, and Till used to fancy that little one. And he said, are you not going to get off? I said, no, I'm just friendly. But what she'd done, she'd gone out to the pool and she'd bought, I'd made for me, she was loaded, I didn't know this, her family were loaded, while she was a singer. She had silver cufflinks, silver, solid silver, like drums. Oh, right. And she had the made for me Liverpool. And she got in cell, I thought, you're dressed to tell me. I've been cufflinks, I said, fuck I can't take you up, look, your wife, where do you get them from? Right, yeah, yeah. So I'm just telling you, you bought your little present, so I bought it. I'm just so still saying, well, you know, but, well, so it's still a compliment. See, why are you getting the movie on? I said, no, not really. Oh, God, why are you saying that? Give me that. I fancy it like mad. You yeah. fucking hell. Well, I don't want that. I'm going to go to your bed and all get rid of it. So, on all involved, they left and they come back again. Next time they come back, I didn't want to know. I thought, well, I'm rid of this. It's getting too long. This. Right, yeah. So, he called for her. So, he comes in one night, too. Yeah. He sits at the piano and he says, I said, oh, you're all right, Lorraine, I always said, oh, she's yeah. lovely, isn't she? Yeah. I said, I, I was like, oh, no, that would be friendly with me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fucking come on, I know about you, he's with there, he's a cook, he's the only show you saw it, look at these, and who were these? He had gold, gold pianos. Yeah, yes, I can. He did. Yeah. And yeah. a diamond yeah. stood a pin for his side. I said, look at me, I only got silver. Yeah. Gold piano, grand piano, was like, Yes. And the next thing, he said, I'm leaving. He was married, by the way. And yeah. his wife didn't sound but Yeah. I said, we're running off, but uh, we're there. I said, you're leaving? He said, I'm going to London. Oh, I said, you're joking, are you? He said, no, he said, I'm leaving. I'm going to run off with her. I was living with the sheriffs in the other white. Right. And I'm going to live there. Right. And the family's loaded. Right. So I said, are you leaving your wife? He said, yeah, well, we haven't been getting them for a while. So he said. Yeah, so he yeah. buggers off and leaves her and buggers off with this bird dancing with the other white. So now I'm thinking, geez, a piano player, please look at piano players. Yeah. We have to get camera over there, so yeah, don't we? Yeah, no, yeah. Now, Riggy at the time was at the, um, in Manchester. In Manchester? At the big ballroom there, the, uh, oh, yeah. what's it called? Very famous ballroom in Manchester. He was working there, it was Cat Withy, you know Cat Withy? No. Piano player, good singer, Cat. Uh, oh, what's the name of it? Big ballroom in Manchester. Big Mac place. Yeah, okay, Big Mac ball in Manchester. Just involved in the band stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Rick was working in Manchester then. He had, a, he had a good job there with the Paul Tap there, you know. Yeah, right. Um, I thought, he won't leave. He, he won't leave there, you know. Yeah. But Rick's the one. Yeah, right. Okay, now I thought, he's, he could do it. It's open against open this. You know? Yeah, yeah. I went to the phone right away that night with Till and Liam. I, I rang the ballroom and said, is Ricky Mackles there? And he said, he's coming off the stand now. I said, play on to you. I said, I want to talk to you. So here's a real car text. So he said, so he called the police and said, oh, man, what's the problem? He said, listen, I've got an offer here. Think about this. 
Do you like working in Manchester? He said, yeah, the next Manchester. I said, right, okay, yeah. He said, he said, it's all fine, you know. I said, do you want to come back to Liverpool? He says, where to? I said, to me. He said, at the cabinet club. I said, yeah. He said, what's, what's up to tell us? He left. You know, awful of words, you know. Yeah. He said, oh, I go back. You want me to come and start at the cabinet club? Yeah. Where? I said, as soon as you can. As soon as you can. If you want it. Yeah. The money's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, he'd been in the cabinet club. Yeah. He said, I don't think about this. I don't think about this. So do, do that, you know. Yeah. He said, give me half an hour. I'll leave you back. I'll think about that. I'll leave you back. I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, within 10 minutes, the phone went, so he got on the phone, so he again. And he says, I'm leaving tonight. <laughs> he said, I'm going to join you next week. Oh, wow. Oh, I said, wonderful, really. Oh, I said, I'd love to come, yeah. I've, said, I've talked to Shirley, he said, yeah, because you're back at Liverpool again, you know, and the cabinet club's late to be in, you know. Yeah. And he said, you know, always oh, high, dear. Of course, he come in, and he wowed them, and they went really cool. Oh, God, the punters. Oh, of course, yes, yes. Loved him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he asked how he came to be with me. Yeah, then Tommy know. Smith was with me then. And then, of course, Tommy Smith left then. That's right, yes, yeah. But he went off with the bloody secretary. He's another one. He's buggered up with birds. He buggered up, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. all buggered up with birds. And who, who came in then? Well, Johnny Mac. Yeah, Johnny Mac, yes, of course, yeah. And that was that was the best show Street, I've I know, ever in. I know. You can't tell me about Johnny Mac because I'm doing Mac. Yeah, because Mac and Mallow were yeah. wonderful together. I'm doing Johnny Mac. Uh, I've asked him, you know. But Mac and Mallow were wonderful together. Yeah. Now, Johnny was with us for about, ooh, must have been with us for about seven, ooh, about yeah. six years than John. When did, you, when, when did the cabaret club close? When it didn't close, we left. Yeah. But then eventually it closed. Yeah. It was going down there, and I was getting tired with it. I was, there, I was there seven years, you know, and I was a cop. It's a funny time, wasn't it? I mean, I, I was at the Wookiee from the fair. I managed the Wookiee for the first three years. Yeah. And I remember that. Um, uh, it was very big for that short space of period, but it never had the longevity of the Grafton no, no, no. Or, or the Cabaret. It was a good gig. Yeah. I, I, I just think that, um, I spoke to Terry about this at great length. I said, what do you think the problem was, Terry? He said, well, he said, when you put uh, a major act on at the top of the bill, he said, they won't come back unless there's another major act on. And this is true, this. He said, um, so... You know, I said, well, you know, what to do? He said, well, think of the top of the bill. So I said, OK, Freddie Stark, he went to the, he went to the safe, he threw a lap of grab on the table. He said, there you are. I said, there's Shirley Ratty. And I said, oh, fucking, and he went back to the, to the safe, he threw 20 grand on the table. Because he knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I picked three or four names. He said, he said, I can't ask him back again. Mm -hmm. He said, it's just impossible. He said, there are not the... By the time the, the mid seventies had come, the juice was not the act. No, like there was. But I left there by then. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because I left in you, your period. Right. So now I'm thinking, geez, a piano player. Who's a good piano player? Yeah. We have a big camera there. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, yeah. Now, really, at the time, was at the um, in Manchester. In Manchester. At the big the ballroom there. The, uh, oh yeah. What's it called? Very famous ball in Manchester. He was working there. It was Cat Withy? You know Cat Withy? No. Trying to play a good singer, Cat. Uh, oh, what's the name? Of it? Big ball in Manchester. Big Mac place. Yeah, Bank. okay. Big Mac ball in Manchester. Just rolling in the back and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Rick was working in Manchester then. He had a, he had a good job there. with a course up there. You know. Yeah, right. Um, I thought he won't leave. He, he won't leave there. You know. Yeah. But Rick is the one. Yeah, right. You know, I thought he's. Yeah. Could be like this open against open this. You know? Yeah, yeah. I left the phone right away that night until the end of the time. I rang the ballroom and said, Is really Mallow's there? And he said, He's coming off the stand now. I said, Play on to you. I said, I want to talk to you. He said, Here's a real car taxi. So he called the phone. He said, I'm not there. It's a problem. He said, Listen, I've got an offer here. Think about this. Do you like working in Manchester? He said, Yeah. The next Manchester. I said, right, okay, yeah. He said, It's all fine, you know. I said, Do you want to come back to Liverpool? He says, Where to? I said, to me, he said, at the cabinet club? I said, yeah. He said, what's, what's up to tell us? He left. You know, awful of words, you know. Yeah. He said, oh, I go back. You want me to come and start at the cabinet club? Yeah. When? I said, as soon as you can. As soon as you can. If you want it. Yeah. The money's good. Yeah. Well, he'd been in the cabinet club. Yeah. 
said, I don't think about this. I said, do, do that, you know. Yeah. He said, give me half an hour. I'll look you back. I think about that. I'll look sure that's good. I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, within 10 minutes, we'll be forward, so we've got on the phone, so we'll again. And he says, I'm leaving tonight. <laughs> Great. He says, I'm going to join you next week. Oh, wow. Oh, I said, wonderful, really. Oh, he said, I'd love to come, yeah. I've, said, I've put the shirt, he said, oh, yeah, do it. Because you're back in Liverpool again, you know. And the cabaret comes straight to be in, you know. Yeah. And he says, you know, always oh, hard to Of course, he come in, and he wowed him, and he went really cool. A punters. Oh, of loved, course, yes. Loved yeah. Loved him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he knows how he comes to be with me. Yeah, and then know. Tommy Smith was with me then. And then, of course, Tommy Smith left then. That's right, yes, yeah. But he went off with the bloody secretary. He's another one. He's buggered up. He buggered up, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all buggered up with birds. And who, who came in then? Well, Johnny Mack. Yeah, Johnny Mack, yes, of course, yeah. And that was that was the best show Street, I've I know, ever did. I know. You can't tell me about Johnny Mack because I'm doing Mack. Yeah, because Mack and Mack were wonderful together. I'm doing Johnny Mack. I've asked him, you know. But Mac and Mallows were wonderful together. Yeah. Now, Johnny was with us for about, ooh, must have been with us for about seven, ooh, what, yeah. six years, did John? When did, you, when, when did the cabaret club close? Well, it didn't close, we left. Yeah. But then eventually it closed. Yeah. It was going down there, and I was getting fed with it. I was, there, I was there seven years, you know, and I was a cop. It's a funny time, wasn't it? I mean, I, I was at the Wookiee from the first, I managed the Wookiee for the first three years. Yeah. And I remember that, um, uh, it was very big for that short space of period, but it never had the longevity of the Grafton no, no, no. or, or the Cabaret. But it's a good gig. Yeah. I, I, I just think that, um, I spoke to Terry about this at great length. I said, what do you think the problem was, Terry? He said, well, he said, when you put uh, a major act on at the top of the bill, he said, they won't come back unless there's another major act on. And this is true, this. He said, um, so... You know, I said, well, you know, what to do? So, well, think of the top of the bill. So I said, okay, Freddie Stark. He went to the, went to the safe. He threw a lap and grab on the table. He said, there you are. I said, there's Shirley Bassey. I said, oh, fucking, and he went back to the, to the safe. He threw 20 grand on the table. Because he knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I picked three or four names. He said, he said, I can't ask him back again. Mm -hmm. He said, it's just impossible. He said, there are not the... By the time the, the mid seventies had come, there just was not the act. No, like there absolutely. was. But I left there by then. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because you, your period, and the couple of years after, they that was the cabaret period. After that, it became. See, it was the only nightclub in Liverpool, wasn't that? Oh, I know. Yeah. The only one. Well, there was things up the road. The odd spot was there. Yeah, but it wasn't like a cabaret club. No, like ours. no. No. That was a real what was his name? Club. What was that guy? George Downey. George Downey. He was well, he, what he a, had, what he had, a character. Well, he, he, had, had, he had a gambling in the cabaret club. Yeah, what it? a character he was. Well, he used to bring me flowers in, he used to say. You know what he used to say? <laughs> George used to come in and kiss me and say, you get my flowers today, baby. <laughs> And all the women used to say, you want them? <laughs> Off him. I said, he says me flowers. He said, Rose is like... He was, Ma yeah, you remember Max, you know Max Beardsley? Yes. You know what? Like, yeah, Max his said this. No, his son is very famous now, his son. No? Oh, Max the drummer, you mean? Yeah, Max the drummer. Oh, Max's son. Really? Very famous. Max, he was crazy. He'd become a world, world star. Oh, that's not right. a but he, had, he was in a... Great drummer, you know, Max. He was in an Irish fucking show. I'll tell you what, what a drummer. Yeah, oh, I know, yeah. Tremendous drummer. Oh, I know. But a loo what a loony. I know. But a great... Is he his act? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a clever is that. He's brilliant. He was off his head, that was the drummer. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Well, that, we had Max a lot. He was stoned before people were stoned, wasn't he? The son's a world famous yeah. actor now, you know. Yeah. His name's Max Beasley, too. Yeah, yeah, Max. But, uh, see, the Cabaret Club, we had George a George managed him, didn't he, with that bloody... Irish. Who? Oh, George. George. Damn it. George Harry managed, managed Max and that Irish show band. That's right. Well, we had those a lot in the company. Yeah, the Irish right. show band, yeah, yeah. He used to manage X. I played with a, a drummer that you know. It's a shame what happened to him, though. He went to the Nick for seven years, you know, he's in seven years. Max? No, uh, Damn. Damn it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, well, I. I That's seven years, but he's also. Some odd thing was. Receiving money going, yeah. Um, Gold bars. Throat cancer, yeah. Yeah, he was a character though. But I loved him. I loved George Darwin. Yeah. Those people, I mean, even the villains like Joe Beach, that people used to hang around with. Oh, Joe was gorgeous. But they were great. Yeah. Even Philly Glennon, even, you know. Oh, yeah. You've never had him lately, Joe. Oh. But he has the richest man in the country, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. But George Darwin. Frankie Lawrence, that's right. He used to say to me, 
I began the cabaret tour again. He had the gambling in the cabaret, but before he had the odd spots, actually, yeah, yeah. the gambling. I used to come to, I used to go to the night's house. He'd be there, George, and he'd say to me, oh. Um, let's see how much money I've got. Somebody. And he always used to pull out, you've never seen a one. Oh, I know, I don't believe that. He's going to the And he'd say, you know, Red, yeah. I just feel undressed without money. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, yeah. oh, he used to come in the, he used undressed to, he used to come in the wookie. And you'd go, George is in all, in all the ways that he'd have them up and down, off the sea. I know. And he used to come in. Oh, then every night he used to go to Calvary Club and go, come up to say, and say, darling, Red, how are you? Did you get my flowers today? Yeah. I'd say, yes, as usual. And when you say flowers, I'd say, I sent him roses every morning. Doesn't he tell you this? <laughs> and he said, does he? I said, yes. Yeah. 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 Rose, the other spot was like a club, but it wasn't like a cabinet. No, it was a cabinet. And there was cabinet. one further up, wasn't there? That was uh, Palace. Yeah, the Oxford Palace. But the cabinet, there's another, uh, the cabin. Yeah, the cabin. But it'd be down from the Blue Angel, um, Roy Adams opened the club, didn't he? Wasn't yeah, it? there's a few clubs went up there, but they were nothing like the cabinet. No. That was the original. We were packed seven nights a week. Oh, I know. Packed. Cue it to get in. I know. And Joe Beach on the door was the yeah. funniest man you ever oh, He was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Well, Saturday night there, you know, you, they were clamouring to get in. There was like queues, but you couldn't get in, you know, and there was no chance of getting in. Yeah. Joe was up three four, you see. Yeah. And he opened the door. This particular time, the, the, um, I don't know, uh, some Chinese were there, the good gamblers, and all the others trying to get in. And Joe was the one the Chinese, the doctor and got in, and said, Come to the gamblers. Yeah. Because they're all at Joe then, say, that's your terrible, this Joe. It's your fault, you let them. Yeah. He said, the vice squad. He said, vice squad? He said, the Chinese. He said, well, have you heard of Interpol? <laughs> you've heard of Interpol, is it? How do you remember the story? The no, Black Eagle had a dwarf what? hanging on it. Uh, do yeah. you know this story? Yeah, it's, it's Kenny, Kenny Baker, the little dwarf. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, he's knocking on the door. <laughs> and Joe was there, he can't see anybody. So he went back in and he knocked on the door again, and the thing that Joe was going, so I was saying, and he said, the piss out of me, I'm going to start pulling it, pull like this, Kenny, little Kenny, like that. And he went, hello, he said, you sound like the Empire. He says, Kenny Baker's the Empire. can I come in? He said, you'll have to get Walt Disney, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Ron Paddy told me that story. He said, get Walt Disney, that's what I'm doing. Beach was the most, you know, oh, the settlement for the puns, you know, any yeah. golfers, there's professional golfers in <laughs> Southport, they knock and say, can we come to the clubs, you're not members, they know we're golfers, we're professional golfers in Southport, playing tournaments, yeah. it's a good club here, he'd say, so, so there'll be an act on the green shortly, <laughs> what are they doing golfing, you would have a ball in here, and he'd go, I don't know about golfing, but it was terrible, hello, hello. Do you remember Red Jean? You must have seen it for a long, decade. Long. Oh, hi, thank you. How are you? I'm oh, very well. Not bad for 62, is he? 62 <laughs> is a joke, and I wish. Only 92. Have you ever seen him? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Talk about discussing some of the characters of all the theory. Come on, Knock it off there, because we're Jean. I'll come again. Oh, are you? I'll, well, it'll, I'll come it'll, back. It'll take me a week to get that down. Well, let's see what you got. I'm, I'm, there's more stories. Most, oh, most of the stuff I know, you know, but uh, um, it's that early stuff. I'll put it into, when you get into that, I'll put it into ill order properly for you. Okay. Because it's, it's out of an hour sequence, that one. Yeah, yeah. But it's a totally different one. I mean, I I've teach, had a wonderful career. I, I teach really 18 have. 20 year olds, you know. Yeah. And uh, what you're talking about, I recognise. Yeah. Because I saw the finish. Yeah. They have no idea. Well, no, they were great days. Oh, they were great days. The camera there. I mean, Cleo, Cleo Lanes, every week we had, for the whole week we had Cleo, we had Atman Rolls. Oh, yeah, I know. Diana Dolls. We had a great time. Diana Dolls. Oh, I mean, great. We had a tour with her for a while. Lovely she was. She's a dolly to work with. Character. A bit fancy. Yeah. From the band, you know. Yeah. But she used to know it. Oh, of course. She's a woman, you know. Oh, yeah, she's lovely. I loved her. Yeah. yeah she's a kid. And we used to, she used to say to me, put on to me, I got a mouse for me, I could hear her for me. Yeah. That's all. No, no. Yeah. And she got on to me. And I sat with her. She did giggle to her. Because she was good. Oh, right, yeah. And she used to say to me, put on to me. She gave me to her. She used to say, would you like to speak with her? And she said, oh, yes, I used to say. 
I know. <laughs> That's why you asked me. I still want to sleep. You can't. Because I only like to watch. <laughs> she said all things like that, you know. She's a bloody character. Oh, I, yeah. she I turned into a great actress. Nice actress. She turned into a boss actress. She was a lovely person, though. Yeah. She's oh, so yeah. nice, you are. Yes. And she came across like that. Yeah. It's all the men, she's got a good lot, you know. Oh, so, but when she says to me, I say, I know, and then she lean over, and she gets a bit drunk, and she starts again, and we have a few drinks, I yeah, say. Like, oh, shut up, will you? We used to call her Doors, you always call her Doors. Oh, that's right, yes, I heard it. Say, shut up, Doors. <laughs> what was the actual account?